Golly. Who knows? Damn it, there it went. Oh, shit. There it was, and I just clicked out of it. Oh, good job. Wait a minute. I can go up to my notifications. Oh, now your video is clear. That's funny. Before you look like Minecraft, Dusty. <laughs> you know we're live, right? You know we're live, right? No, I didn't know we were live. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice for someone to say something, damn it. <laughs> I'm just randomly, arbitrarily clicking buttons and stuff here. <laughs> welcome to Jason's channel and welcome to Jason's forehead. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> you know, you guys have to like prep me for this stuff. Wait, you're the one controlling it. What are you talking about? We have to prep you for this stuff. <laughs> you know, I'm not used to this video thing stuff. Whatever. <laughs> Welcome to Jason's channel, and Jason, what here? I'll help you out. What are you going to talk about today, Jason? We're talking about stuff. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're wait, talking minute, about you. Welcome to Banana Fine's channel. Wait a minute. Wait, I'm sorry. Let me do it with the Jason voice. Welcome to Banana Fine's channel. No, you had too much excitement with your voice. All right. Yeah, I know. No reason to be like a little, I don't know, <laughs> a word that I can't say live. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Banana Fine's channel with Alabama Pickers and the Nameless Picker, who never remembers his own name. So <laughs> that was so funny. We're trying to find each other's links so Jason can put them in the description. I'm like, Eric, what's your name? I can't find well, I have no name. Me. Name was, but I don't know what I am. Hell, I don't know. I don't know. The, the name is <laughs> millionaire. So, anyway, we're going to talk about um, basically, yeah, stuff. Uh, stuff that <laughs> I'm like, oh, crash and burn. <laughs> we're talking about auction, online auction finds again. No, we're not. No, no. Are we? Yeah, that's, you bought this stuff at an online. It's just been a while. You just haven't had a chance to get to it yet. We haven't showed everybody this one yet. No, I think only one of the items is the online auction stuff. The... I, what I did was I went into the back room and grabbed everything off that giant death pile back there, oh. which, is about a, which is about a thousand square feet. See, I didn't know you'd done that. I thought we were just talking about the online auction stuff. Can I give oh, some... No. Can I give some audience shout outs real quick? Because you've got three people watching and two of them, one of them's me, one of them's Eric. And so I want to say hi to Jill Olson. <laughs> right, Jill. <laughs> Who's probably, oh, sorry, I know it's lonely, but well, no, people will get the notifications. By the minute. <laughs> people get the notifications. You don't have 15 or 20 in here. Oh, oh there's Mr. Stash 51. <laughs> oh, man. We're cranking it now, man. We have we have increased our audience by 100% already. <laughs> Someone else logged in? That's right. You can always make your numbers look better if you just describe them in some sort of terminology that no, nobody understands. Can we just say 300 people are watching right now? Yeah, prove it was. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I reached into the back room and I grabbed a bunch of stuff that like hasn't seen the light of day in quite a bit. <laughs> And I figured I'd, uh, you know, show some of that since I didn't really buy anything this weekend since it's, A, the weekend, and B, I got so much stuff, I don't really want to buy anything right now. And both Jason and I kind of spent a whole lot of money last weekend, so. Oh, and there's that too, yeah. Can you just say lazy, though, if that was the reason? Or are you allowed to just say, you know, I just didn't feel like it? I'm not lazy. What are you talking about, lazy? No, you're not lazy, but that's my excuse. <laughs> That's your excuse. Yeah, that's, you that's actually you don't buy anything either, did you? <laughs> I haven't bought anything in three weeks or something. But yeah, it's not, I, mean, I don't think any of the three of us are hurting for stuff to list. You know what I mean? No, definitely not. It doesn't stop us from buying, obviously. So yeah, I mean, you know, you always got to be out there looking for the next latest and greatest find. <laughs> Banana find. That's that's right. <laughs> so. Anyway, I definitely bought too much stuff this last weekend. Oh, that's right. So last week, Eric came over here to uh, I'm in PA, and uh, well, he bought a lot of junk. Oh, well, we we did a flea market. <laughs> oh yeah, we did a flea market that only half the market was there. That was yeah, that was a little disappointing. I mean, it had some bad weather, so that really didn't help matters any. But you know, the Saturday was good weather, but it was still really windy and blustery so i think that kind of drove away half the market but 
Yeah, and flea markets up here are usually better on Sundays from what I've seen. I mean, I don't know. It's been a while since I've actually done flea marketing. I but just wanted to start getting donuts out. were awesome at the flea market. I will say that. A little guy with a little donut machine. Oh, those donuts were to die for, man. That was worth the trip. Yeah. Mm. But, uh, I mean, I, I, I spent about 100 bucks at the flea market. I mean, I bought some things, nothing special. Make money, lose money, I don't know. We'll see. But um, What did I buy? You didn't buy anything at the flea market. Oh, oh no. Yeah, you bought one, one thing. You bought one thing for five bucks. That's right. Five dollar chisel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, it's worth like 25 so I paid for gas. I'm good. <laughs> well, the problem was the day before I'd spent uh, $2,200, and Jason didn't quite spend that much. But, you know, it was still – it was a big day for us the day before. And I spent 11 if I remember right. Yeah, you were about half what I spent. Yeah. But we Wait. went to a, a local uh, experience. I don't really know what to call it, you know. <laughs> It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's a guy who, plus warehouse kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's mainly electronics, but he's got everything in there: computers, radios. He's a hoarder. Uh, yeah, basically. But you know, we sp I spent like twenty two. I, I actually bought him out of, of one particular category of item. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm problem showing it real quick. But I bought. I spent fifteen hundred dollars on the deal, and it took us four hours to get the deal done. But I bought record needles, and I bought about three thousand record needles from it. So, by the way, I apologize for Dusty not being on camera right now, but he's matching pants to a shirt or something. I'm getting dressed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> when you hang out every day with people, you have you understand their habits. So. Yeah, serious. <laughs> I'm not going to say I wasn't wearing any pants earlier, but he wasn't wearing any pants earlier. <laughs> My stuff was in the dryer. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I, I, I made a deal with him. Uh, it Like I said, it took us about four hours to close the deal because he he's the kind of guy that has to really marinate on an item. And we were his shop was big enough that we could spend four hours there. And we actually went and got lunch and everything, too. Um, but I just it was kind of one of those impulse buys when he threw out a price for, like, a quarter of the, of the item. I'm like, that's not a bad price, but I, I don't want to be competing against him down the road. So... I threw out a price. He came back. I threw out twelve hundred to buy everything, and I we went to his back room. He showed me what he had in the back room as well, and I, I came out back him at twelve hundred for everything. He hit me at twenty five, and we settled on fifteen, um, which I thought was for him was really good because he doesn't like to discount a whole lot. And I bought another six hundred dollars worth of stuff there as well. So, um, but I think the key was with with a guy like that was just kind of letting him think about the deal. And uh, like I said, I've got these 27 gallon black totes. I end up with three of them that are full. There's about 3,000, maybe a little bit more uh, individual needles in there. And there's quantities of some, and some are individual, some are cartridges. Um, they're really easy to list. It just, there's just a lot. Wow, that shirt looks like a painting. That's my Kentucky Derby shirt. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. It looks like it's got her hat. We've got, we've got some Derby, Kentucky Derby activities today. So I have all khakis and little leather loafers. It's a very southern tradition, preppy kind of thing. But I like the shirt. I had one in the 80s that had paisleys and stuff all over it, and it wasn't cool in the 80s, but I thought it was cool. It's well, still not cool now. You're wearing a watch, too. I'm wearing a watch. It matches my shoes. And I kind of have to host an event, so somewhat. So I have to look presentable. Yeah. Well, you you do you clean up nice. I've been put in charge of making mint juleps. <laughs> so oh, yeah. yeah, that's gonna be bad. Uh, no, I mean it's, it's bourbon. You no, know, it'll be like with me. It'll be like bourbon, 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 bourbon. Simple syrup and some muddled mint. Yeah, but it's gonna be like a little bourbon for Dusty, a little bourbon for the person making like a little bourbon for Dusty. Yeah. You know, yeah. End of the night, those mint juleps are gonna be like kick ass. So. I actually got up this morning. I already went and picked the mint. Too. I've been, I'm a farmer on top of everything else. So, but yeah, I mean that that was the deal. I mean, I bought some car manuals. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot about those. I mainly concentrate on on Corvette and Camaro, and mostly Corvette manuals. These are the uh, factory service manuals. Hey, Mister Sadie, I got to run. All right, peace, peace out. out. Mister Sadie, or something like that.
<laughs> it's okay. You, you, we just keep you around for comic relief anyway. You can take over. That's right. Time. You want me to jump in from the car, make smart aleck comments? Oh, no. Your car <laughs> videos are terrible. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, I, 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 he had a bunch of factory service manuals that I bought. Um, again, they were I, I bought mainly the Corvette manuals, figuring they were the higher value ones. I didn't look anything up, and it turned out I left some that that some other make cars that were actually really valuable that you know we'll get back to I think because I don't think anybody else is going to buy them. Um, what else did I buy? Oh, you bought some of those like headlight things and stuff. I bought some some. Just some miscellaneous stuff. I bought a lot of brass pieces, uh, brass door, antique brass door pieces. Um, that piece that I found. What was that? Remember the mixer head thing? Oh, I forgot all about that. Yeah, I got a paddle a paddle mixer for a 65 quart, you know, Hobart mixer. I mean, it's sixty or seventy dollars, and I mean, I only paid twenty bucks for it. Um, I mean, I mean, that's that's the kind of a uh, mix this guy has. I mean, I bought a a. a gamma tube to replace a uh, radiation detectors tube in it i mean about actually gave me one of those for free you know but he's just it's just an interesting character and you know it's it's definitely worth going out there i mean um it's just one of those weird places that you know if the deal's right you can make a deal if not you can cherry pick it and you know you that's what you were doing you were cherry picking going through and you, i know you bought a bunch of video games and stuff like that are you gonna talk about that stuff yeah i, I don't have a lot of it here but uh i bought a lot of uh you know computer discs five and a quarter games for uh pc dos games stuff like that um what else did i get oh i got a couple of things that are back here that i am going to show on the video if you like those yeah box games there um what else was there oh i bought a couple of computers those uh multi oh, yeah. yeah computers that the uh, they're uh, Pentium 100s and uh, they have a unique case to them. That's what's nice about them. I mean, they have a unique case with uh, speakers built in the front, um, which was different. Most, most, most computers back then, they had to have this, the separate speakers. And I mean, they're kind of cool and they're valued somewhere between 250 and 300 bucks on eBay. You're paying 35 a piece, $40? I paid 50 only because um, I only took three of them. If I bought ten or more, it would have been thirty-five. But I just didn't really feel like buying that many of them. Well, the day we were there, it was pouring rain, and we brought Jason's truck, and so we literally we paid for everything and let it sit there and went back the next day. And I, I, I had an SUV. I, I had to run it. back. <laughs> yeah, I had to go back the next day, and I had an SUV. I couldn't get a van. Vans. I, normally, when I go to Jason's, I rent a van. Um, but the, all the vans, the prices have almost tripled the cost because people are taking them on vacation. So now it was like a hundred dollars a day to rent a van where I can get an SUV for 40 bucks a day. But an SUV is not quite as uh, voluminous, voluminous or whatever. I can't even pronounce it. Doesn't have as much space as a, as a van. And believe me, that thing was packed coming back from, from the shop. And um, I wasn't sure I was going to get everything in there, but I, I did. I got it all in there and, we came back and actually uh, Jason and Adam were hanging out and they were cleaning out his, his old storage unit, finally get rid of all that old stuff he'd had and save him some money that way. So yeah, Adam helped me out big time. <laughs> I felt sorry. I really put him to work pretty hard too. Yeah. You bought him lunch though. So yeah, but you know, he was, he was working uh, quite a bit, you know, we're that whole, it was like a 10 by 10 stuff with literally trash. And we threw it all in his van. And, uh, you know, then we brought it here and boxed it all up. Yeah, we, it, was, it was trash, but it's, it's – uh, Jason doesn't have a, uh, a dumpster at his, at his unit yet. He's got to wait until he gets the back half of his, uh, of his shop. He's getting the back half, which has a back exit door on it. And that will be able to get a dumpster. But so there it was uh, – we brought it back. He brought it back to the shop. Then we put it in, in like he had a lot of scrap boxes and stuff. So we taped it all up in boxes, and then it was actually easier to dispose of from his house. Then, but yeah, is it all gone now? I meant to ask you. I am down to six boxes. Okay, I'm trying not to like overwhelm the garbage people. You know, <laughs> the bulk day was for the overwhelming things. So, uh, yeah, but it was also raining that day, and I didn't want to put cardboard out. Of, you know, they're heavy as it is. Things would fall apart, and then I got a mess. True. 
you know. But I mean, that's pretty much where it's at. I mean, I'm I've kind of put myself on a little moratorium for buying now. I've got way way too much stuff to list. Um, the hardest part for me is varying my listing because I can't just if you just list one item, it's great, but you you get bored with it really easily. You know, especially when I'm talking, I listed seventy items in the last two days, and it's all in this. There's seventy items in that one box, so you know, twenty five dollars an item. I mean, they get up there, so yeah. You know, I don't have it that easy. I have to list like bigger stuff. <laughs> yeah, but you're you're listing, you know, two hundred dollar items and stuff, so they small yeah. picker. Don't get me wrong; they're not that big, but they're just not that tiny either. Well, I still got a lathe to break apart upstairs. I haven't even done yet. I got another unimat to break apart. So well, that's right. I turned you into a tool guy too. Yep. <laughs> but that's me. We decided to do a video. I mean, I was going to do a separate video, but I just I said, you know what? I, I don't have the time, and it just hasn't been convenient. So kind of doing one together here, yeah. um, showing off a little bit of the stuff we bought, and then kind of go from there. Yeah. Between that and also the fact those record needles. I mean, you know. There's well, we like three thousand. I mean, you know, after you show like four or five to the camera, I guess yeah. Like, record needle. Hey, guess what this guy's is? It's a record needle. Yeah, I mean, they literally all look the same. <laughs> and some of the stuff I brought back from Jason's, you'd already seen. We showed in the last video because, like, all the Waffle Makers, all those pictures and everything. I brought those back with me. Um, That's right. Did you make breakfast? <laughs> they're they're in a tote on the bottom over there. I've got four totes stacked up, and there's a tote on the bottom. Um, you know, those are $25 items, but it's just, yeah, again, priorities. You got to sit there and figure out, I need to get these needles up. So, you know, to me, these, these are something that's going to just going to keep paying me for the next, I don't know, five years, maybe. Hopefully, it'll, you know, I'm not going to lot them up. I'm going to put them in as individuals and hopefully get $10 a piece out of them. <laughs> yeah. So it'll take some time, but, you know, that's the kind of work you like doing, really. Well, it's nice as I can sit here and turn around and take, you know, 50 photos and get 25 items up in no time. It's no different than the stock certificates or the, the camera slides or. Well, I've got 3,000. I have 3,000. Last time I looked, it was 3,247 stock certificates still on eBay. That's, that's in 123 listings though. So not too bad there. And again, if I sell those for a dollar a piece, I'd be way ahead, you know, but I'm usually getting about 10. I sold one this morning for $10. I sold, uh, uh, Stash said something about the military photo. I sold four of those military photos uh, this morning. So, you know, stuff like that. It definitely, I mean, it pays off money and it doesn't take up much space. This is literally going to take up probably two shelves. I have these, I have these uh, four foot long black shelves. And you pick them up at Ollie's or Costco or things like that. I think it's going to take up two, two of those shelves, just two rows on those shelves by the time I get them stacked into smaller boxes and everything. How many totes was it again when you bought it? It was three totes of needles, but they weren't all organized. And what I'm gonna, what I'm, the way I'm doing them is literally I'm gonna keep them in flats, like this. This is an Amazon box, and I'll, I'll, I'll mark them like this is PF one, and these are gonna be that's my designation for needles because Fan Steel was the first uh, brand that I, I was listening, so I'm like, I'll just make those PF one, and then I'll do. Two, three, four. That way, I'm only looking in the small flat for the actual needle. And the nice thing about like these, these are even smaller. But if you look at them from record needles, they all have I don't know if you can see it very well. They all have numbers on them, and so you can really tell. You know, it's number six seventy-seven dash D seven. Why don't, why don't I'm only looking in a box this big? It's actually and they're actually in order, so it's really easy to, to do them. So why don't you take one out just in case no one's ever seen? Yeah, record needle before. This looks like that. This is a fan steel, and what's nice about it is a lot of these will cross. You know, it has a, a fan steel number, but on the back it has all the different. I don't know if that's very good, but has all the. Let me highlight myself actually. You can actually see, you can actually see all the different needles that'll fit. And the way I list these is I, I say you know it's it's a fan steel eight oh nine dash D five seven seven. Then I list some of the the cross-reference stuff as well. Mm. And that way you can, uh, somebody who's searching for needles is going to be that. I don't do free shipping on anything. So it'll be. And where, like, did, you, where did you get that contract? Dollars. So I'll probably put them up at like $12.99. They'll do 30. I'll do a 30% off sale, 30 to 33, depending on what I'm feeling like around anything over $10. I usually do a $30 sale on it. 
Um, and then, so that'll put them down to about eight, eight fifty. And then I'll do, I'll do, uh, with these I'm doing, I'll do three fifty shipping on them. So it'll, it'll land right around 11 to $12. I, I thought you always did free shipping. Yeah. Nah. It changed. Yeah. Like a year and a half ago, two years ago, <laughs> I got tired of paying for shipping to everybody and, you know, I do free return, so I'll pay shipping on that. But no, I just don't do free shipping. And I did a lot of research on free shipping. And what I found that it was only about 20% of the people on eBay were offering free shipping. And so I thought, you know, okay, I can be with the 20%, which is great. Or I can be with the 80% that aren't. Now, the thing I like about free or not having free shipping is I don't have to worry about the shipping cost when I'm figuring out somebody's offer. That's the goal right there. It's convenient. Definitely. All right. So you're ready to like dive into some of this stuff? I suppose. I, I pulled out a decent amount of stuff, so this should be kind of an interesting show. Pretty much a a mixed bag of variety. I didn't just it's not just tools or anything like that. There's lots of different stuff. So Yeah. Just ask you know. something about the new updates. The new updates really aren't that new. There's a little bit more of a clarification. We looked at them. I think the biggest thing was that on the good till cancel for people who have smaller stores, um, they're going to go to a calendar month instead of a 30 day. Um, so that, cause they were kind of called out on that because you know, if they're 30 days and some of those months are to 31 days, people are going to get charged now for if they had a thousand listings, they use them all. And then now they got a thousand more to show up. So they are going to fix that. Um, again, I don't really care about that. That doesn't bother me. I have a, I have an anchor store. So I have 10,000 uh, listings. And then uh, managed payments was uh, now PayPal friendly, supposedly. Um, can you put an anchor in timeout? I didn't, didn't know. So, uh, I'm not looking at the chat. So yeah, I didn't know where we're gonna put Dusty in timeout. Uh, oh. <laughs> we put so, Dusty back in the box. <laughs> yeah. What else was? There? I mean, there really wasn't a whole lot. It was just kind of a little bit of a clarification. It's fun to read over, but. You know, the summer update is where the, well, we get some major changes in it. Um, whenever that pops out, that'll probably we'll probably see that in June. Um, nothing, nothing earth shattering. I thought I think you know they're talking about some more buyer prote or seller protections, but you know, if you do the right thing, you don't have to worry about that. The only thing I noticed is now I can't use the old shipping uh, <laughs> thing. So to my chagrin. <laughs> yes, they finally forced Jason into the new shipping uh, protocols, which. Dusty and I have been doing for, I don't know, three or four months, but he finally got pushed into it and he hates it. So, yeah, no, it's, it's not that bad. It just kind of looks like a cell phone. I don't know. Yeah, it definitely looks more mobile friendly. And, you know, I, the more I, the more you're online, the more you realize that everything's so mobile friendly. And I, that's great, but I don't do anything mobile eBay wise. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Dusty was laughing at me because I, I got so annoyed with it that I, I said I wanted to go back in time to when eBay was, uh, you know, a little more simplified. <laughs> so I went back to that website. Uh, what was it called again? Oh, the Internet Wayback Machine. Yeah, and I went on to eBay uh, in, I think it was 1998. 1999, yeah. 1999. Oh, oh, it, it was great, man. Um, it, I mean, well, it, uh, um, so, um, of course, um, excuse me, what for... Um, so yeah, look, look, so I did this Wayback Machine thing. It was so funny, and it's like it opens up the splash page for eBay back then, and it's like you don't realize it, but all of a sudden when you see the different flashback, you you like get like this like feeling of nostalgia. You know, it looks so different than what it was today. So <laughs> it's quite fun. In fact, it does that for like a variety of different websites. If you get a chance, uh, you know, you can play with that uh, program. Or, yeah, it's kind of fun. Or, I mean, it's fun to look back. So, yeah, I think I did Best Buy too. Well, it was fun to look back on, on 1999 and then look at how many items were in certain categories. And you could tell that what, what eBay started, I mean, people were selling, mostly selling like baseball cards and, and I, not I, even, the antiques and collectibles didn't even have, you know, anywhere near where it, where it was at before. But yeah, I think it was. Um... I think the hot item in, in, I think it was 99, was the PlayStation 2. Oh, yeah. Video oh. games was always hot. Yeah. 
So I was I was in '99. I was selling camera equipment. That's odd. I still sell that stuff, but then it was contemporary stuff because um, I worked out a deal. My I used to work for Kmart, and they were shutting down the Kmart, and they shipped in like the entire district's camera equipment, and it went so cheap. I was buying it all and then flipping it over to a uh, to eBay for just crazy profit. Um, I did that for like eight or nine months, and instead of you know, hey, I should be able to do this and make a career out of it, I went back to work, but. I made like thirty thousand dollars in like six months off of, off of what they were basically giving away. So, you know, I, I'm just looking at the chat now because I I popped it out because usually I don't look because I'm usually just showing stuff. But yeah. since I'm talking for a bit, I popped it out and I noticed that um, Eric uh, Gunter said that he always goes back to the classic. I was doing that for the past. It's almost been a year that I've been hitting that back to classic, back to classic, and. Then yesterday it disappeared and it just says why is classic missing? Yep. <sighs> so it's I, not hard. I, the biggest problem was is yeah, if you want to ship like medium flat rate or some of the some of the, the post office boxes, you've got to jump into their into the what is it? Not the not the um Oh it's I'm, um I'm on it now. It it's a uh, carrier or something, right? You have yeah it, it it defaults to custom size so you can put in dimensions and everything but if you click over to right next to that box there's a carrier packaging and that's where you find like all the different flat rates and, and regional a's and b's and boxes and everything like that and i didn't know that because i always put custom size but because i don't usually ship flat rate and jason ships a lot of things flat rate and so it was like he was like throwing a fit and tools were flying and he's like i can't find the media flat rate this is pissing me off and <laughs> i was pitching a fit <laughs> oh yeah it was it was he we was stomping his feet and crying like a little girl and then we we fi figured it out and i held my breath for a while was... <laughs> <laughs> but then now, what's, what's concerning me is i used to go to the classic to do fedex and i don't know I have not looked at a FedEx packaging to see how that works, if it's easier or better, because I, mean, I haven't shipped a FedEx package in a while. So, Yeah, actually, Jill, that, that's the main thing I was worried about. It wasn't so much the looks of it as I noticed it was forcing you to put in measurements for the boxes, which can be kind of annoying because, you know, at this stage in the game, I kind of pretty much know what falls into the next category. So it's yeah. like to put measurements for like a – small 664 box all the time is a bit annoying but i mean I, I haven't tried it yet i'm not sure if it forces you but i mean when uh well, when i was first doing it for the flat rates and the region a's at least when you select those it doesn't force you to put in the box sizes for that yeah now now the interesting if you if you're the type of person that weighs and measures your boxes and you put it in the listing it'll translate that stuff over automatically um, if you're not like, I don't, I don't typically do that unless I'm, I'm going to put international shipping that I'm going to take care of on there. I never, I don't, I fill that out only then. Otherwise everything goes through GSP. So, um, so it's, it's kind of interesting there, but yeah, it was just kind of, kind of annoying. Yeah. So, I mean, I've only, so far I've only shipped out maybe four packages with this only happened to start happening yesterday towards the evening. So I can't really give a full, you know, thumbs up that I like it. But, you know, like most things, usually you don't have a choice anyway. So it's just, yeah. uh, you know, adapt. <laughs> adapt and overcome. That's the key. So. Yeah, as long as all the features are there, really, like the insurance and everything else, you know. Yeah, it's not, it's not bad. I mean, so I've been using it for a while. And, and I, get, I get so used to just popping the numbers in. Because, again, I use primarily brand new eBay boxes. Um to ship with. I don't really do a lot of shipping with used boxes because I don't really, I don't really get them. I don't order a lot of stuff. And so occasionally I get an Amazon box and my daughter orders stuff or I get, you know, the occasional one, but most of the time it's a, it's an eBay box that I purchased. I thought um, you get your boxes through the, you know, going in the dumpsters and stuff. No, no, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not big into dumpster diving. So <laughs> you're like me, you know, you totally get stuck in there if you actually went to do it. I've done my share of dumpster diving. I don't want to do it anymore. It's, I, and don't get me wrong. There's good stuff to be found, but it's, I'm not, no. Hey, I found some of my best finds in a dumpster. I'll tell you, I, I'll never forget that, man. I was driving through the mall parking lot and at the corner of my eye, I see Alice in Wonderland's face like oh, this. Oh, that's right. You got all that stuff from that. From the, I, uh, like, <laughs> the Warner Brothers store that closed down. 
Yeah, it was the Disney store was they weren't closed down. They were just getting rid of their displays and I guess setting up new displays. So it was at, I go I reach into the dumpsters, Alice in Wonderland, and who else was there? It was all the characters from Alice. Uh, I forget exactly who was there. The the the, the oh, like there. Three for high, Yeah, oh yeah. They were like Alice was six feet and the other ones varied like five to three feet, depending on which character it was. And uh, it was they were awesome. See, I'm also a big Alice in Wonderland fan, so it was even better. How long did it take you to sell them then? Well, first of all, I had to get them home. <laughs> and at the time, if I remember right, this was a long time ago. I'm talking like 15, driving your Audi convertible 15 years ago, maybe. <laughs> I, I mean, I if I remember right, I was driving my Suzuki Samurai. Ah, okay. So I think I could only stuff three in at a time, and I believe there were six. So I stuffed three in and I like Flew to my house. I mean, I, I had it floored. We were doing like 30 the whole way. I can say like 35. Yeah, you know. And uh, yeah, I unloaded, went back. Thank goodness they were still there. And I got the rest. And yeah, I ended up selling those things between, I think it was eight and 500 a piece. <laughs> so that, that was a great day. But, you know, you never know what you'll find in those things. The only problem is nowadays, I'm like, you know, we're too old. I don't want to start jumping in those things. Forget yeah, it. I'm afraid if I jump into something, I'm going to throw my back out, and then, then I'll be, you know, having, you know, rescue coming out with a damn crane to get me out of the thing. So I'm not going to do that. So I'm serious, man. I was lifting a bag the other day that was, uh, I mean, I had it weighed down real heavy. It must have been a hundred pounds, but I just had to walk it like literally from the end, of, the beginning of the driveway to the the end of the driveway, and threw it in the car. And all of a sudden, I felt like a little like you know, twitch in my back. I was like, oh. Well, <laughs> I was like, there's no way I'm doing that stuff anymore. Well, we 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 kind of, I mean, it was kind of funny because Adam Adam's a, you know considerably younger than we are, and and we went to the flea market. He was with us at the flea market, and we went and did the storage unit clean out, and they were cleaning everything up. And the next day, he's like, I can't move, man. I am sore. And I'm like, yeah, that's old guys kept up with you. <laughs> he's like, so no, Adam, I mean, you does yoga all the time. And I actually like, wrote him and said, listen, next time, keep up, cupcake. <laughs> Uh, it was too funny. Yeah, it was um, the characters. Yeah, I think it was the Mad Hatter, uh, Alice, uh, White Rabbit, um, Cheshire Cat, and I believe the Dormouse, and one other. I forget what it was, but I remember those. So it was cool. <laughs> I mean, then you know, you'd be amazed what people throw out. Another time, I was driving by. Um, the, the, the guy had this big pile of stuff out in front of his house, you know, for the garbage. And I was like, all right, let me check this out. So I went over there, pull up this box, and it was like a whole bunch of those um, uh, retail scanners, you know, for inventory scanning. And I knew exactly what they were because, I, you know, I used to work in retail years ago. And I was like, oh, these are neat. But, you know, I really didn't know what the value of them was. But I was like, yeah, they're cool, though. And I was like, there were like 10 of them with all the wands and everything or, or whatever was with them. And I ended up getting a hundred apiece for those. I ended up selling them to a company. I went on a website, I went to a company that just specializes in buying those and refurbishing them and putting them back in, in you know, circulation. That was kind of cool too. Yeah, I don't really do. I mean, if, I, if I'm driving down the road and I see something, you know, interesting in somebody's trash, I might slow down and take a look at it. But unless I know right off the bat, it's got real good value. I got too much stuff to list. I don't worry. I don't. I don't need to go to dumpsters for I mean, it. Don't get me wrong. Again, this is the same thing with the Alice. This was at least ten years back or more. I, I don't think people are throwing out as much stuff. I mean, the metal guys. I throw out. I throw out like metal all the time for my uh, scrappers to come around. So, yeah. Um, just because I mean that's that's good income for them, and I don't have to worry about it. So I never worry about you know having too much metal. Um, Gee, you, me too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I end up with with crazy, crazy weird shit. I'm sitting on about a thousand pounds of metal right now. I get that stuff all the time. I'm waiting for my scrap guy to get here. But other than that, I mean, it's been a it's been a pretty quiet week week and a half since we did the last video. Um, probably two weeks, isn't it? Uh, we did one right before we let my left, so yeah, probably about a week and a half. Um, uh, but yeah, we just decided to go ahead and throw a video together and just throw some of the stuff we picked up like recently. And 
uh, that's some really, really interesting tools, Civil War collectibles. I don't know what you want to call them, but they're really interesting and um, hopefully pretty valuable. Yeah. By the way, if anyone ever wonders, because I went back and looked at one of these videos once, I'm always kind of looking down, like, you know, it's because I have this very large monitor and the camera, the only place for it is like way up top. Like so, way up top. He sits yeah, at a like standing up. desk to begin with. So that's why I'm always kind of looking down. It's not like I'm looking down at you guys or anything. It's just, I'm actually looking normal, but the camera's like way the hell up there. Right. And for us, I mean, we, when we hang out, you know, during our hangouts during the day, we don't use Google Hangouts. We use a peer in. And so for like for us, the screen's a lot smaller and it, the camera doesn't show the whole view. Like when you see in my room right now, you can see all the way over to my hallway and some of my inventory over there. On a peer in, you only get about about this much. And so it's kind of weird to us because, you know, we, we get on Google Hangouts and it's like, whoa, you get the whole camera view and everything. <laughs> so I was trying to keep that trash down off the camera view. but. I know, yeah, you don't notice any of the stuff behind you usually. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so anyway, I, I guess we've done enough procrastinating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, coffee, I'm good. Yeah. Ooh, coffee. Damn it. So you should have got it beforehand. Yeah, shoot. Uh, you get not having a Keurig at your office, of all things. I mean, the perfect coffee thing. So. I, I I do have one at the office. Jessica bought me one for Christmas two years ago. Yes, and, you, and it's still sitting in the box at your house, isn't it? No, it's in the box, but it's over here in, in the back shop. <laughs> it moved a little. So, all uh, right, so go ahead and flip it around. Let's see what we got. All right, yeah, the first, this is good, like I said, this is a hodgepodge of stuff I've gotten recently, stuff I've gotten a couple of weeks ago, and stuff that has been here till the end of time, it seems like. <laughs> and a lot of the stuff I grabbed out of his back room when I was there and said, you need to list this stuff, so, because it's good value stuff. We were we were trying to find stuff that was worth some really decent money. I uh, Eric's like, list it, and I'm like, take it. And he's like, list it, and I'm like, take it. <laughs> Yeah, but he won't give me the stuff I really want. You know, I mean, like like the, all those rolled papers back there. I would have taken all of those. So, well, except those because I already gave those. No, you can't take those. No, no, no. Or that little brass piece over there. I take that. No, no, can't have that one. You can have a little brass piece. You want the little brass piece? Oh, that little brass. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking about the license plate plaque, not that. No, 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 no. Yeah, we'll show that in a bit. That's pretty cool. Um, what are you showing first? I guess we could actually start with that. Why not? This is this is going to be interesting because this is stuff that you never see. Um, you might see a piece or two out there, and this is really good because you can, if you find this stuff, you're ne you're not going to realize what it is if you, unless you're really into the know. And it's got really good value. I mean, we're talking very small, but worth lots and lots of money. Um, How's that? Yeah. Look good. That good. Yeah, that's good. It was an online auction, and it was primarily buying wood shop parts, um, planes, things like that. And at the auction, the guy had a bunch of reloading stuff. And you, know, you guys know we've talked about it before: reloading tools, reloading presses, all that stuff is good money. There's some things you can't sell on eBay, but most of the tools and everything you can sell. And so we were watching those lots, and I don't think we bought any of the reloading lots, did we? Uh, actually, no, I don't think so. But I did find mixed reloading stuff yeah. here. Yeah. Well, Jason bought two cabinet. Is it two cabinets for the stuff? And the re part of part of the reason why is he he bought the cabinets are fantastic. They're real heavy duty and they're perfect for like postcard size, um, uh, Victorian oh, yeah. trade card size. They're like three by six, but there's two rows, so really good cabinets. And they're the cabinets are super heavy. They're probably three or four hundred dollars a piece if you have to buy them. Um, but they were also full of tools, and there were some reloading tools and stuff like that. But they, they, they're also selling this box right here. Um, and this box was by itself, and you stepped up on when you when you paid for this. And if I like, Jason, wait, I like how he says we. <laughs> no, I said you stepped up. But I, as, as I said, if Jason hadn't bought it, I would have told him to buy it because it was it, for me because I would have paid this much money for it too. No, no, absolutely. We were going back and forth on it. In fact, if I remember right, you said pay no more than eight and i said in my mind i was like okay for eric eight that means pay 12. <laughs> that's where i would have i would have gone to 12 and then you end up going to 15 on it 
No, 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 no. This went for uh, uh, nine sixty plus the premium. Oh, okay. I thought it went for fifteen. The fifteen okay. was the cab. One of the cabinets went for. 15. Oh, that's right. Okay, so we so we paid a thousand dollars for this, basically. Um, yeah. Actually, a little bit more because the premium was twenty percent, wasn't it? I think it was twenty at that sale. So but no, yeah. no tax because I'm tax exempt. Or not exempt, but you know, a resale certificate. Eleven hundred dollars. I would have been. I was. Like I said I was after we did because we were researching the entire time the, the auction was going on because it was a lot. It was a online auction, and we were watching the bidding, and we were both going through and just kept looking at stuff. And I kept raising my price, and he kept raising his price. So I would have paid. I would have paid what he paid for it. <laughs> um, but it's an interesting. Now, what's interesting is that, that kind of like the the cherry on top was the actual value of the case itself too. So go ahead and pop the case off and let's. Oh, right. First, let's go to our little brass piece. Oh, this was found in one of the cabinets, right? Yes, this was found in one of the cabinets, and I did not know um, it was even in there because in the pictures it wasn't yep. showing. But when I was cleaning out the cabinet, I reached in the back, I saw this, and I looked at it like this, and I said, "Whoa, that's going in a very special box." <laughs> I took it <laughs> and made sure it was not damaged. <laughs> so go ahead and pull up the camera so everybody can oh. see what it is. You can explain what it is, but all right. So we were you got it up a little bit. It's kind of interesting looking, and then now turn it so we can see the other side. And what this is is this is the tip to a thirty-seven millimeter projectile. What's really cool about it though, it's a cutaway. So this would be like almost like a salesman sample, but it's more like a training tool showing how it worked when you would fire this projectile. And this is like 1916, 1917, something like that. It's all brass. Um, really, really cool. We have not been able to find another one like it. Um, we found similar items that were a little newer, but not brass. And we're going to put the value of this thing right around 300 bucks. That angle shows it a lot better. Right? Yeah. It's just really, really cool. And what's funny is I just sold a 37 millimeter projectile just like that, but it, it was actually a little newer one. And I just sold a tip and I got a hundred bucks for it. And that yeah. was nowhere near a sale, you know, a salesman sample cutaway piece. So yeah. What were we thinking on that? 300. Oh, okay. That, yeah. That's a minimum. We It might even go for more than that. I mean, they're going to start the auction probably right around 299 and let it roll, but. I, that's just a fantastic piece. And again, that was something that was, that was nobody knew was in this guy's collection. We kind of lament the fact that we didn't buy the reloading stuff because there was some really good stuff he had. And just it's like, did we, we probably missed some really good deals. Yeah. When I was there looking, I did see some interesting stuff mixed in because the, when they did was the lots were big and they just didn't take uh, pictures. They, were, they literally stood back and like took a yeah. picture of the, of the desk and all the shelving around it. So that's one lot. And it was, I mean, yeah. it, it, to get that, it would, it would require the rental of a truck. Um, it was close to getting Jason everything he bought into his pickup truck. And any one more item, he probably would have had to rent a truck. So, when I you, have, when you buy an online auction, that's some of the things you have to be concerned with. Is sometimes you can't tell how much you're getting, and so you got to be prepared to handle a whole lot of weight all of a sudden. Because a lot of these auctions are, you got to take it all. It you know? was so tight. This is the first time I've actually had to put objects on my dashboard on the passenger side. <laughs> That's how tight it was. Yeah, it's about the way it was driving back from your house this last weekend. Mm. So, oh yeah. So anyway, speaking of that same subject, not everything's photoed. I bought another lot just because it had one piece to a machine that I bought, and it was like a lot of like four shelves. And this was in the bag ah. up there, and I didn't even know it was there. And there were like four of these, all different types. This is the only one I have left. I sold the others for. Um, I sell uh, six to 40 dollars a piece. I've gotten like a hundred bucks so far, and I think I paid oh. like 12 bucks for that lot. Yeah, but it's a turkey call. So. so, pretty cool yeah. stuff. I guess there's no turkeys in the audience because I'm not getting yeah. <laughs> well, he's out doing something else, so. <laughs> All righty. So. Now, what was the name on this case? Do you remember? The turkey call? No, the case. We were able to look up the name oh. on the case, too. Oh, the case. The case does have a name. Yeah. So it's like, it's so funny because like little packages can look so deceiving. This case is literally only um, 
you know, 16, 9, 11. So it's not really very big, but it can hold a lot. It's got little latches on each side. And then it spreads outward. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> That's a hell of a case. Yep. And we, the funny thing is, we were looking at all of the stuff. We were trying to figure out the values of everything inside of it. And then it turned out that the case itself, the last one that sold, sold for over $250. So, yeah. you know, we were just like, holy crap, all of a sudden, this becomes more interesting. Um, we've got a $250 case. So that, that just helps, helps you when you're making a decision of, can I spend a little bit more money? Yeah, the case says Fiber Products MFG. And it's a like a salesman sample case or something like that, or a small electrical tool case. But it's just it's a really cool case, and it's not very heavy, even though yeah. it's completely full of all this stuff. Yeah, it's got a lot of stuff in it. And what it is full of is Civil War era, say 1850 all the way up to about 1880, firearms tools. And these are the type of tools that would come cased with a firearm sometimes you get 20 guns and one wrench so like the armorer could set up the guns for people but you'd only get one wrench for every 20. Um, there's some really 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 rare stuff in here um just yeah. start, that's that's what they call a mainspring clamp and you would use it to uh, again to work on guns these are all like gunsmithing tools from like the 1800s and yeah, this one says 1873 mainspring vice. Yep, that's for Springfield. There's, there's five of them. Yeah, there's the whole bunch. And again, those are $50 to $70 a piece. Because these are the originals. These are not reproductions. That's what's really nice about them. They all have the Marshall markings on them. Um, you can tell they're also, just by age, you can tell how they've been made. So that one was the, the handmade one, wasn't it? Hand forged. Yeah, it says old clamp 19 slash 18th century handmade really belongs in a museum. Interesting. I was a unique collector of these. And again, it's just these are for like black powder and single shot uh, rifles type stuff. Then there's this little guy. So that was a powder measure, right? Uh, Can't remember. I think it, I think it's a powder shot measure. No, no. You, actually, you know what this is? This is a really great, oh, great that's for the uh, um, sight. Yeah, that's that's what that is. Is that's to look down the barrel to um, check to make sure it's loaded or whatever. Yeah, we, that's that's kind of the, the, the way we're gonna do it. Uh, stash is we're gonna or not me. We like I'm doing anything with it. Uh, it's going to be an auction and with a starting price. And we kind of go from there because some of the stuff is so rare. We don't even have a clue. It's going to take several days to get it all figured out and then also to get it listed. So, yeah, I mean, uh, a fair amount of them are at least marked. The guy. Yeah. The guy who, who the guy who had this stuff, a lot of the stuff is marked and there's a lot of duplicates. Um, but you've got like 1851 army screwdrivers. I think that's what that is. Yeah. It's a screw. Uh, it's a screwdriver and a what they call a nipple wrench yeah. and those were originally issued to like the armors so you'd get like the government would buy like 20 guns in a case and they'd get one or two of these for every one every 20. and the, the reproductions are available but guys who are really into collecting guns and stuff don't want reproductions they want the original so they can get it it goes with their guns yeah there's a lot of like wrenches like this type and there, you know, fair amount of them are marked, which is nice. Screwdrivers or Spencer rifle. Yeah, Spencer rifles were, you know, a Spencer rifle was a gun that uh, they used in uh, Unforgiven, Clint Eastwood movie. It's a four shot revolver, or four shot rifle. There's a little picture on it. It's kind That's of a Colt piece right there. That's a Colt screwdriver. That thing is probably worth fifty to hundred dollars just because it's got the rampant Colt on it. Um, there are these little, um, 
Yeah, if you, if you guys get into reloading stuff, when you see something that says uh, L.E. Wilson on it, that's a deburring tool for, for cases. But the nice thing about it is when you see L.E. Wilson, that's their high-end brand. Wilson is already good. But when you see accurate or L.E. Wilson, which is what those are, that's even the next step up. That's even more dollars. That's another gun screwdriver and nipple print. What's that for? This one says Australian... Steyer? Lorenz. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to... That one's a little hard to read. Yeah. I mean, there's... There's lots of these little tiny wrenches. This one says Civil War. <laughs> That's it. But we, we added up. There's over 50 wrenches. Uh, and we figured the price of the 50 wrenches was $50 a piece. I mean, you just don't see this stuff. I mean... Every once in a blue moon, I've come across an estate sale where I've seen like one of these. One wrench, yeah. I mean, there's a massive amount. That's a cool little piece. There's a, there's extra fittings on the inside uh, for the different sizes of, of nipples and screws and stuff. It's just a cool little little wrench hammer type thing. Um, get that piece out of the middle. A whole bunch more wrenches. There's these wad cleaner. Yep. And those are those are rare because those are hand forged. This one says 1841, 1842. There's these type of screwdrivers. Yep. They're kind of neat. And we looked at the price. The prices on these were just out of control crazy. There's a sticker here that says Rogers and Spencer. Yep. A lot of duplicates. This is like a Billings and Spencer, uh, like a kind of like a yeah, almost a bicycle wrench, I guess. Oh, here's another. Here's a brass uh, measure. Brass measure, yeah. Um, oh, this was neat. This was that shotgun. Shell. Brass shotgun shell. Yeah. That's a, that's actually a live round. You can't really do anything. You can't put that on eBay, but that's still you can. There's other venues to sell stuff like that. This one's a little rusty, but that's a uh, a mold, right? No. What was that? No, it's not a mold. It's uh. A... Oh, that's a priming tool. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a like a like an early reloading tool to reload a priming in the case. This one was cool. This I looked up where about uh, two hundred bucks. Yeah, I think it was, two, it was it two or three. I think no, I think it was two. Okay. Well, I couldn't find one exactly like it. This has the this piece. I think wasn't. Yep, that's the nipple uh, cleaner. Or it might have actually been this back piece, which was all these things come out, and there's different different tips uh, to it. Tips. And then you have the brass hammers to, to you can hammer on a gun and not scratch it up a martyr or anything like that. Yeah. The best piece is probably in the middle there at the at the bottom in the canvas. Well, well, we really don't know what this is. Well, I I do and we don't. The, there it kind came with some screwdrivers and it came with some cleaning tips. That's there's two there's two post-it notes in there. One says it's for a Borchardt. Uh, handgun and the other one says it's for a Gatling gun and they're basically it's a maintenance kit for that so we're still trying to figure it out now we have found a Borchardt kit that looks similar to it but not quite exact have not found anything on the Gatling gun but the Borchardt kit was like six or seven hundred dollars this one's deep Then we got the other side. Yep. You know, Hawk, we just we actually just started. This is the first thing we started with. So these are of, of those uh, site where you stick this end down the barrel, and then you could look inside at this end. 
yeah, so you can see the bore, their bore sites, so you can actually just kind of see what, what's un, going on with the lands and grooves. Different gun wrenches, different pieces, um, vices. There's some more of those. Got mirrors in them. Um, they those have, which we do. kits of some sort. We're still trying to, f to figure these out. There's two of these. And they're definitely interesting. I forget what this was. Uh, you'd have to open it up. I can't remember. Yeah. It's empty. Just a uh, I think it held primers. There's also a lot of this style wrench. Well, that's for the Springfield, right? And you see how it's got the U.S. marking on it. That, that, I mean, it tells you right off the bat it's a U.S. model. So. And these are all original. This is glued metal. Yeah. And that's that's starting at thirty dollars because you can you can still buy reproductions of all this stuff. Um, so that hurts the value a little bit just because some people buy them cheap. But again, original gun guys want the original stuff. Yeah, this one has three different. The oil cans are really cool, and I mean, I'm, this was this is eighteen seventy nine. Yep. And there's lots of other little various parts and pieces that I'm not pulling out that we have to, you know, figure out what they are. The key is to get as much up as possible we can identify and then go from there. These were good. I forget what they were called, though. I bookmarked it. There's two of these. They were like 100 bucks a piece, weren't they? I want to say they were more like 150 a piece. Yeah. 125. But yeah, it's, they're I mean, marked. Here's another. Here's a really nice uh, powder measure. It's got the little. Yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to see. One of those recently, not quite as nice as that one for like fifty bucks, didn't you? I forget what it went for. Nowhere near as nice as this. This is really old. The other one I had was from the fifties. Another one. U.S. model 1879. Uh, spare bayonet handle. Uh, and then there's a whole bunch of different oilers. These oil cans, they're really pretty. If you can, there's like actual pattern on them. There's like tons of different. Oil cans here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's about 17 altogether, looks like. All different sizes and styles. And other miscellaneous. I forget what that was. We did look that up. This was a site. Yeah, that's a couple of bucks for that site. So, yeah. oh, I mean, that's, that's wow. kind of for an eleven hundred dollar investment. This is probably going to be four to five thousand dollars, and may even be more than that. Who knows? Hope for the best. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And like I said, it was a little small little case, and we thought we were going to do really well and get it cheap, and it kind of blew up at the end. So. Yeah, well, usually I have to pay for good stuff. It's a little hard to open and close because there's so much stuff in it. And that's the nice thing. When you have something that small, that'll be, I mean, like I said, Jason's going to basically work on this from home, so then you have to have to keep it at the shop. He can just, this would be something you just kind of do and get around to it, so... Yeah. All right, so let's move on to some other interesting stuff. There we go. Here's a little model. Air King JR8. You bought that at Cabin Fever, didn't you? Yeah. And that thing is actually, believe it or not, that little model in that little box is a little balsa wood model and everything is worth $50. 
Yeah. New old hard, yeah. The only drawback to it is, well, it just fell apart even more, but the, the rubber band for it's all dried up. Yeah, but that's not a big deal. No. Yeah, I could only find reference to two of these that have ever sold. And the they box, the that box alone was eleven hundred dollars, Hawk. The whole auction you spent four. Oh, that auction? I think it was four. Um I think it was five. Was it five? Yeah. I mean I bought like so much stuff at that sale. I don't know if we did a video on that one, did we? No. Mm -hmm. yeah. No. No, that was before you were doing videos. So, yeah, that I that was a lot of stuff though. It, I've <laughs> I've already made more than that, and I still have some fun stuff. Yeah, it, there was a lot of it was, the guy was a big wood shop owner, and there's a lot of wood planes and wood plane parts and things like that, and um, also metal working tools and things like that. The Jason, I mean, which is what he specializes in, but you know, just a lot of tooling and stuff that was bought and sold. The twit. You're gonna sell your Hardy Boy set? I don't put this up because I have the. I I bought this. I, I forget what it was. It was very cheap, like maybe ten bucks. I got the entire set. I just pulled one book. And it's from what year to? Or do you remember how how many you have of the set? It's a, there's a lot of books. You got like the first forty or fifty. You got all the blue hardbacks, and they went soft back after like sixty or sixty one. This one's dated 69, so you're off a bit. No, no, no. I'm talking about when they went to softbacks. Not not, not the year, the number, the the, the mystery number. Oh, oh, the mystery number. That's I've, number 18. And they, I mean, they, they're they well into the hundreds now, but for, for the blue ones, which is what most people identify Hardy Boys, um, that was the most popular ramp for the longest time. There was like 50 or 60. Yeah. Hey, DDG. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm just going to say then I got a bunch of these too. I just pulled one out. These were high end uh, um, cleaning rods. Yeah, these are cleaning rods. And you got like seven or eight of them, didn't you? Yeah, there's a lot of them. I don't remember what they were worth. Uh, I think they were 50 a pop. I'll look them up. Here we go. Here's an HP still sealed in the box mouse. That's old school. This is an old school mouse too. Look at the design on it. Squared buttons, everything, yeah. <laughs> it's not even in English. I mean some of it is and some of it isn't. That's probably worth forty bucks. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more. Oh my god. A PsyQuest drive still sealed in the box. <laughs> Most people won't remember these. This is like, yeah. it's kind of like a zip drive, basically. Except it's, well, it's a, it was manufactured at the same time the zip drives came out. Yeah, but these weren't like anywhere near as popular. Yeah, they, they these are floppy drives that you take in and out that are 135 megabytes. And they came out with these like at the same time the zip drives did um, for people who could transfer large photo files that's kind of the the the, uh, the group they were targeting the guys that were doing a lot of uh, the early stages of digital photography you know guys are doing you know 3d animation and things like that they had big files they wanted to be able to transfer back and forth so zip and and this company came out with this stuff here we go back in the days we needed a glare guard for and this, Apple. this is for the mac uh you know a little macintosh the classic and all that isn't that cute I ended up getting three of these. What are they worth? I didn't even know you had them. I don't know. I couldn't even find any for sale, so who knows? I was keeping one for myself, this one. The other two don't have a label on the box, but they're still new. So pretty neat because I eventually want to get one of those little Macs one day. And you might need a glare guard. That's right. And we got boom. Super Pong. Atari Super Pong. I've never even taken this out of the box. I bought this quite a while ago. Yeah, we were looking at one today, actually. Dirty. <laughs> but. So this would be after Pong was out and about already. 
Yeah. Uh, this is like an upgraded Pong. Yeah, because Pong, when it first came out, was, was either orange or red. But that's what I had growing up was Pong. Well, there are many versions. I think the orange ones were Odyssey, if I remember right. I don't remember. All right. Next we have these are kind of interesting. They're not really worth much, but ah yes, <laughs> we saw these and we had, it took us a little bit of time to figure out exactly what we were looking at. But believe it or not, these are still made today. They're construction site steel toe shoes you put them on over your regular shoes and now you have steel toe whatever yep i actually know what they were when i bought them i just wasn't a hundred percent sure but that was my first you know inkling when i saw them i said i bet you there's some type of early steel toe yeah but what's crazy is they still make them today i mean that's yeah what's that I'm surprised. yeah <laughs> yeah knee pads for another guess but I, with this piece like this i kind of figured it was more for the toe I mean, they're neat. I mean, the problem is they're nearly not worth a whole lot because they are still made today. So maybe 20 bucks on those. But I think we only gave like three bucks for them. And that was at the Cabin Fever auction. This is kind of cool. We got a set of bookends. Yep. These are foundry bookends. You see these a lot, actually. But you don't see them with the name on them. That's Apex Smelting out of Chicago and Cleveland. Um, advertising, yeah, little advertising pieces, and those are aluminum. They're aluminum, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. No, wait. Actually, is it magnetic? No, I thought they were pop metal at first, but no, they're aluminum. So that's actually kind of cool. I mean, you don't see a lot of a lot of cast aluminum like that. I've got I've got them in cast iron before, but I've never seen them in cast aluminum, and they're worth about twenty dollars a piece. So figure forty to fifty for the set. I only found one. And the guy got eighteen dollars for it, um, except it, it was only one. It wasn't both. So. Yeah. The set will sell. A set, well, those will sell better than just a single, obviously. But I'll probably put it at twenty bucks and go see what happens. I, I auction everything. I'm not good for that. Yes, Jason auctions everything. This is neat. It's a TV antenna. You're supposed to let them guess. No, it's kind of obvious, I guess, with this. <laughs> old but, school yeah. TV antenna. Real old school. What's the name on it again? The name is Radeon. Ah, Radeon. Yeah, so it's RCA. Yeah. Pretty neat. And that's like 40 to 50? Uh, yeah, I think it was 40, if I remember right. Then I got three of these in the back. Looks like a rocket ship. <laughs> and obviously a marker light for either a semi or yeah. Like that. They, these are really good. I sold. If you ever see the marker lights that I can see on the top of a cab of a semi truck, um, if you see those out in the wild in the uh, orange or the red, you should buy them because they go for insane amounts of money. We have no idea what these are going to go for, but I I bought a whole case of those things new old stock and i was selling them i was getting 200 dollars for five um these are bigger but they are probably this along the same lines cab lights um so i'm thinking you might get like 50 bucks a piece out of these hmm. hope so either way they're kind of neat um next we have a bag and in this bag we have a bunch of little guys Little cap guns, I guess. Yep. The little ones are part of a collection, a Mark's collection, if I remember correctly. Yeah, one's, this one's broken. That's the other half of it. So I'm yeah, you have to take down. And then the rest are okay. Yeah, the whole collection sold for 20 or $30. No, these were a lot more. Were they more? Yeah, remember these ones are stamped. Um... Aren't they Mark's? Yeah, I think they were marks. Uh, These are yeah. like guns of the uh, of the uh, of the TV stars or something like that. Because, like I said, that's the yeah. marriage from the Steve McQueen movie uh, or Steve McQueen TV series, uh, "Wanted Dead or Alive." 
Wanted dead or alive. Yep, that's what it says. Yep. Hey, mother's mustache. <laughs> What's up, MM? We will now start talking about security and security. Right. I don't know if these captives would be much security. Um, oh, here we have a little tiny box. And in here. Oh, I forgot about this. Yeah. This is an original microphone, sure microphone. Yeah, it's cute. It's like pristine practically. Well, a little, little red missing right there. But I mean, pretty damn clean. And it's got the like 50 bucks as well. Disappointing, one worth a little bit more, but it's, it's that it's that red bakelite plastic. So I'm always bad at putting things back in the box, so we'll do that later. You're gonna take pictures of it anyway, so yeah. All right, this is definitely outside my wheelhouse. I have a whole bunch of oh, bicycle parts. Bicycle parts. I bought this lot for it was either ten or twenty bucks. I forget. This is kind of funny because what happened was is Jason got there before I did. He goes and he buys this lot, and then I buy I buy another lot of bicycle parts, and it turns out I bought the stuff he left. <laughs> I got I got such a good deal on it, and I actually sold. I got some bike seats in there and everything. And I already sold all my stuff out of it, but he got the best stuff out of it, and he hasn't even listed it yet. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little slow. What can I say? So I forget what a lot of this stuff is, but it's it's all um, Shimano. Yeah, Shimano. That's that's a uh, that's a derailleur. Yeah, front derailleur. Yep, and that is a clamp on. So that's it's important when you list that to say clamp on or weld on. And this um, is these are brand new. Uh, does the parts match the box? That's the key. Yeah, it does. A lot of the parts because a lot of times you'll see what, what guys will do is they'll because I had some of this stuff just recently, mm -hmm. and what happened was he took the parts off his old bike and they put the old on and they put the old parts back in the box. Well, the, the old parts were still worth quite a bit of money, but wasn't quite as nice as having the uh the new parts yeah and these are brand new i mean there's... that's the rear derailleur now you sell those separately because they they will bring really good money those will bring about 60 to 70 dollars a piece i already did the listings for these i just didn't insert the pictures yet so these these look new but i put them as used because the one has a little slight scratch right now nah, yeah well they're just i would put them as new just shop worn or shelf worn. Better, better to um, what does it say? Under uh, over, over deliver, under promise, over deliver. There you go. <laughs> These I believe are used. I think. Mm, but, um, look, at the, look at the ends of the uh, of the uh, cables. Are they bent at all? No, the, actually, no. The cables are new. Then then it's new. Yeah. So those are your gear changers. Yeah. All right. Maybe I better change that list. That's a cable set, so that's cool. Yeah, that was an expensive. This is another set of um, gear changers. Yeah, except there, there's okay. two of these, and then the cable. That's a brake set. That's a brake handle set. Okay. Brake lever, right and left. There we go. Yeah. This was expensive. This is an older part, apparently. Yep, that's the same stuff I was selling. Yeah, that's a set. So you sell that as a set. That's a, that a brake set? It is a brake set, yeah. Yep. Original price was $40. I think that's what it was still worth. Like 50. Yeah, it's still worth that. The, the Shimano Diori line is actually pretty decent. This was the best piece. This is like 100 plus, I believe. Is that a crank set? Yeah, it's brand new, still in the plastics. Yep. Sure. And I got two of these. One's used. Yeah. So, I mean, you paid like, would you pay like twenty bucks for everything? 
It was definitely no more than 20, but I might have actually only paid 10. It was real cheap. I remember saying that to myself when I bought it. Bastard. Beat me to it. <laughs> I left that other box for you because I didn't want to deal with those dirty parts. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you should get here earlier. I only had an eight hour drive. He had like an hour and a half. I mean, <laughs> here's another thing that I bought there that you missed out on because you weren't on time. Yeah. Clear plastic seat covers from the 1950s. We even had the atomic symbol on it. Yeah, even the, is there, has the instructions. It's pretty much a new set. But these are like the clear plastic versions. And now last year, Jason got a set that was not clear plastic. It was an original uh, replacement set. And you got almost 300 bucks for it last year. Yeah, it was 300 This And it, it's funny because the same vendor is where we bought this stuff from, the same, the same set, but it's clear plastic. And I think you paid like five bucks for that set. Yeah. You know, that's, I mean, and I've showed stuff I, I bought from that same guy, the Model T starter stuff and things like that. That that set's nowhere near 300. But no, that's probably 50 to 100. So. Uh, this is a calculator, Singer, real, real, real old school. But the important thing about it is, I don't know if I'll be able to get on camera. This thing, yeah. this piece fell down, but inside it has Nixie tubes. And anything yeah. that has Nixie tubes is great, you yeah. know, good money. The Nixie, that's that's probably a hundred dollars worth of Nixie tubes right there. And yeah. what happens is a Nixie tube is a little tube that you that actually has the ability to do numbers on it, like a little vacuum tube. And a lot of guys will take these things apart and turn them into clocks. That's the big thing to do with a Nixie tube. So if you you want to see something cool and interesting, look up Nixie. It's N I X I E clock. And you'll see tons of them. And they got bigger tubes and smaller tubes, but that's what guys are looking for, these things, and they don't make them anymore. I don't know if they, I think they make newer versions of them now. They, they stopped making them. I was actually doing some research on them. So oh. you got to find them old. School. There's, there's some people still have them in stock, but nobody's manufacturing them anymore. That one's not going to be worth as much just because as a calculator, it's in terrible shape. And Yeah, you're selling the Nixie tubes basically. Yeah, but the only problem is I can't test them because it takes some weird power adapter. So it's probably, I'm going to start that at like 25 bucks to see yeah. where it goes. But and normally if you have like working Nixie tubes though, it'd be like a solid hundred. Um, this piece, let's see, this piece was weird. This was out of that electronics lot that I bought. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. It's like replacement gauges or, or LCD screens for some sort of Epson system. Or wait, no, that's no, that's no, that, that thing plugs into it. It's like a diagnostic LCD. tool or something. I. Yeah. We couldn't find anything on this, but it's just kind of a guess. We figure somebody will salvage it for all the uh, LCD screens. No, I think we found something on this, and it was very expensive. One? Actually. I don't remember. Yeah. That's the problem when Jason doesn't list things for a year. I forget about it. I know this is from a while ago. <laughs> I think we found out that it was pretty expensive, though. Use power scroll. Okay. How does it connect to the system, then? Well, there's a power and on and off and a scroll. Have you tried to fire this thing up? No. Wait, there's a door here too. It's a little tight though. I need a screwdriver. Take a standard computer plug. Might have to try to fire this thing up. I don't know. It looks interesting. <laughs> and we, yeah, we buy a lot of this stuff from at Cabin Fever. Literally, he's bringing in pallet boxes full of stuff. And it's like you build a big pile and he just throws a price at you. This is nice. This is. A hard card, 20 megabyte hard drive for an IBM PS2. Yeah. We're talking real old school. It's amazing they actually had the drives that thin by PS2 standards. PS2 would have been like, um, like 286, I believe. No, nah, 286 is they had PS2, so. Yeah. I know they started in 286. I think yeah. it went up to 486, though, and then stopped. I got two of these, actually. And those can be worth anywhere from $50 to $1,000. I mean, it's just crazy the differences in those things. That one's probably 100 bucks. I would say if it's working, 100 That's something I have to test. Now I'm working probably 50 Yeah. 
Hey, look who's here, Eric. Eric Dominic's over here, Stacker. Todd, yeah. Swamp, uh, Glenn. That's cool. What's up, guys? Um, all right, here we got some interesting. This one's for a calendar. Unused. 65 pinups. Key with this is the artist. The artist will drive the value. Um, they're all signed. It's a print, but it's still a signed print. But um, you've got like, you know, I bought two. Jason got like the rest. Oh, wait, there's another one. Oh, no. That's the, no, that's, that's the actual calendars. It, it on, yeah. These are basically new old stock. Um, I sold mine over the last, because we bought these last year. I sold mine and I got like $75 a piece for them. Yeah, and I decided to keep mine like a hoarder and I have a total of five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so eventually I will get to sell these. That's a duplicate, I believe, right? Yep. That's, a, that's a Zoe Monster, right? I think that was the name on it. Yeah, it said Zoe something. A different one. See, that one's actually going to be worth about a hundred and a half. This one has a little. Oh no! Doesn't matter because you got the the you got that's Gil Elgrin who is like one of the kings of the pinups. And this is still a beverage distributor. Yep. Still unused January. So you you get two different collectors. You get the beer and wine collector guys out there that that really like that stuff, and then you get the pinup collectors, and that guy's one of the kings of pinup. Oh, this is it's got sparkles. Yeah, that, I can't read the name on that one, but again, it's all about the artists and that's that type of stuff. But the nice thing is these are these are kind of the classy ones. They're I mean not real revealing or anything like that. So yes, because we don't put any of that risque stuff on my channel. Well, no, but it's what's nice about this. That's you've got like yes. Yeah, that, yeah, again, Zoe Mozart. That's that's another good one there. That's about seventy five bucks a piece as a minimum, and the Elgrin is going to be about a hundred and a half. <laughs> Entitled "Lovely Lady." So I got five of these that I've had for at least a year now or so. Yeah, there's like four hundred bucks sitting right there. Here's a good one. This one I've had for <laughs> for about fifteen years. <laughs> what is that? I haven't seen that one before. It's art. It's reflecting off things here. Very neat. Who's the author? Who's the artist? Artist is K Ward, and then there's Dash Salem, and it's number fourteen out of fifty. And I can tell you that I actually bought this in Salem, Massachusetts, when I was on vacation one year, like fifteen years ago. So I bought this in like a little shop that was selling like Ouija boards and all the other, you know. Uh, Do you know what it's worth? stuff i have no clue i just bought it because i like the picture and i never hung it up though it's been sitting you know from place to place in a box and i just unearthed it again the other day so i thought i'd show you guys oh cool so pretty neat. all right next these i got the other day with that lot for 1100 it went up with you, Eric. Yep. These are computer games for the TRS-80. This is a $200 game all day long, but unfortunately, it has some damage here. So it probably knocked it down to maybe 100 Let's we'll see. And then I have three of this one. These are sealed. Not in the best shape, but they're still sealed. These are probably 100 apiece. So that's 400 right there. So that's a nice little stack. Uh, oh, and this I got from there. There's this, see this box right here? You can kind of see it, I think. Turn it around so we can actually see what it is. Oh, he sees a box. It's a big box, and it's stamped Radio Shack on the side. And what it is, is it's an original TRS-80 desk. Still sealed. So that's kind of interesting. I hate to do the shipping on that. Oh, I mean, shipping would be easy, but could you just got to slap a label on it? But mm, I know. Sell it. 
know, we, we've been trying. We've been trying to have an intervention with Jason on keeping too much stuff. That's why I'm showing this stuff. It's like helping me sell it. How did so, I not get those out of your hands? What? How did I not get the? Oh, those are all your Lake George stuff, though, right? No, no, these were in the back room on the shelf. I, there might be a couple here. This one's Lake Placid. I always love vintage pennants. I I love vintage pennants. I sell them all day long. I it's they're easy to ship. Now I ship mine in a box. I roll them up and ship them in a box. Um, so those like those would go in a uh, like a. 864 box or maybe a, even a 604 that'd be an 864 some of the bigger ones you got to put like in a 1266 box but um Lake the Shepard. really cool thing about them is like those will go for anywhere between 10 and 30 dollars a piece uh champlain might go for a little bit more remember that the, what's it called what's the monster there in the that's lake? champy yeah, right champy yeah <laughs> champy the monsters in lake champlain secret caves those are all like 50s and 60s Here's this. I've actually was here when I was a kid. Santa's workshop at the North Pole, New York. And I think oh, I, it's an Upper J. I think I've been here too, actually. Yes, you got that because it says Upper J on it, doesn't it? Yeah. How can you? You can't sell that one. That one needs to go on your wall in your house. I don't. Yeah, you know, these these I've had for maybe another ten years or so. So I'm slowly getting them towards the where I want to sell them. <laughs> Those are easy to list. I mean, you you a few pictures, you throw down a ruler with them so they have an idea how long they are. But I've got a whole box, a banker's box full of pennants. And I I grab them. I, I basically, I, I, I keep them unrolled in the box. You kind of sit down in the box like that. And then, uh, you know, I, when I sell them, they, they sell them. But like I said, they're, they're so cheap. And they all ship for under eight, under really under about six ounces. These are so cool. These are arcade marquees or, or headers that go on the top of arcade machines. Yep. I one of those. We bought the where did we buy those at? This was that computer auction a year ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a big right. computer auction. This this is um this is a great game, by the way. So I'm keeping this one. Uh and it also has the Chuck E. Cheese logo, which is neat. That's so Pizza Chuck Time Cheese. Theater. Do they even do that anymore? Yeah, I'm it's still a business, yeah. No, I mean I, do they still do Pizza Time Theater? I haven't done a I don't Chuck know. E. Cheese forever. All I could tell you though is is Chuck E. Cheese, um, the uh, the founder of Atari, uh, owns Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, okay. And uh, so that's kind of neat. Uh, Nolan Bush. Now, uh, we have some of these are stuck together a little because they were like actually hanging on a wall with Velcro, and I took this stuff off, but there's still a little stickiness on some of them. This one's plastic. Let's see, Wolf. Two. Got a couple of Gorfs. Gorf. And these are more, now they become more like art than they do as in, but somebody who's actually repurposing or, or rebuilding a machine might need the piece as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. People buy these all the time for to, you know, fix up their old machines. I used in another lifetime, I used to collect arcade machines too. At one time, I had like twenty something of them. Come on, Super Cobra. So I'm stuck this one. Ah, Donkey Kong. Excite Bike. This is like one of those Nintendo Verse machines. Ah, okay. Multi games. Arch Rivals. This one's kind of cool. I like the base theme. Oh, I'll this neat. I love no, these are not reproductions. These are all originals. Yeah, these are all originals off the machines from back in the day. I think we paid, it was 100 bucks or something for all of them, right? Yeah. Ms. Pack, always a good one. <laughs> I mean, these are great to just even just hang on the wall in your little man cave. I, I, hang back there. I kept knocking it down, so I had to move it to figure out a better way to hang it. But. Or in this case, Lady Cave. <laughs> she Shed. This is, sure. a, this is a control panel. So this would be the header would be up top, and the control panel would be down here, and this is where the joysticks and the fire buttons 
That's what those holes are for. So that's kind of neat. Thank you. I mean, these are these are good dollars. They're not huge dollars, but I so we paid a hundred dollars for them, and they're thirty to fifty dollars each. Yeah, well, some are a little less twenty. They're they're average probably between twenty and fifty. I uh, what's next? These are kind of cool. I bought these like five, six years ago. <laughs> My name is Jason, and yes, I have a problem. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to talk about that. I actually so actually this kills me. I sold a sweater it was like one of the first things I listed when I got back on eBay in like 2014. Just sold a sweater recently. Like didn't even know I had it up. So these are original um, charts from Atlas Lead Company. This is uh, thread dimensions. There's four of these in total. They're all different. How much you get for those? He said. Well, if someone reproduces them online. Those are like I think thirty or forty a piece. These are originals. I don't know if that killed the market or not. Decimal equivalents. It's this one. So you need to find that one that nobody's reproduced yet, and then go get it reproduced. A little bit of tape caught that. I don't want to pull it. I got to cut that off. Thread formulas. And that's cool. Cutting tools. Yeah. They're all like blueprint type paper. They really pop. They're like a really nice blue. These are kind of neat. And you were getting how much for those when you were selling them before? I haven't sold them. Oh, I thought you said you're getting like a hundred bucks a piece for them. Oh, eh, no. Occasionally, I've had these in the past. I think I used to get like fifty a pop on them. It's kind. Of, I mean, it's kind of funny. I mean, we all sit back and we look at our our piles of clothes of stuff we have, and it's amazing how how much sometimes you have money just laying around. These are by the South Bend Lead Company. And you you yeah. forget about it. You move on to your next haul, and then you, you know it's like, oh, I'm, I, I didn't get to that all, and I forgot there was actually really good dollars there. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I used to get like fifty a pop. I mean, right there, that's one hundred and fifty dollars that's been sitting there forever. <laughs> and then while we're at it, I might as well show this. Yeah, that's been sitting there for a year. Yeah, this is a couple of years. Yeah, a couple of years. Tin uh, metal sign. Yeah, I sold I sold one of those recently for I got like 120 bucks for mine. Yeah, about right. All right. Yeah, so there's gonna be they asked if there's gonna be a 300 subscriber giveaway, Jason. I don't give nothing away. I'm in the business of making money. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I don't know. I, to be honest, I didn't think of it. Um, I think maybe more than 300 isn't exactly a significant number. Yeah. <laughs> a thousand and, and he'll give you something. I don't know. He'll figure out something. But. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. If you haven't subscribed to both of us, uh, the, the links are in the uh, description of the video. So make sure you go and subscribe to both of us. Um, we, have, I, we haven't done a whole lot lately because we've actually been out too busy buying. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, when it comes down to it, I, I don't want to speak for you, but I'm not really the uh, content can, uh, provider. I mean, I've been on you know, YouTube for years now, but only lately just doing a channel. Really, it's more for fun. Well, and, it's more for fun. And then also, Jason, believe it or not, he uses these videos to go back and like, when did I buy that? How much did I pay for it? So some of the stuff is kind of revealing to, okay, that's right. That's how much I paid for it and when I bought it and all that. So it's kind of a, a way to self-accountability as well. Um, and then like we'd like to show you guys, you know, that there's just there's more to eBay than just your average stuff out there. There's more to eBay than video games and clothing. I mean, there's it's just a ton of just weird and unique things out there that not everybody's on. 
you know, you just, I mean, it's ways to make money with it, but doing really well. How many cal are those calories did you end up with again? Oh, these little guys, they look a little tiny um, as I break it. Little tiny um, pharmacy calendars. I got these in the original mailing uh, letter, you know, envelopes. And um, I don't know, I must have like probably a hundred of them. Yeah. So even if it, even if you sell for five bucks a piece, I mean, that's five hundred dollars in a box, which I think you paid five dollars for. Yeah, and I bought another box full of these, probably another hundred of these too. And this was like another five dollar box lot. Nestle's milk, you and your baby, and it's a little baby book. It's a little tiny baby book. And I've sold these before. I've sold you know similar ones with this, and it's just your little baby's first year record and all that, and. People love these things. Your baby is eight months old. Did he walk, talk, birthstones and flowers, weight and height? Well, this weight chart's got to be way off to like people today. <laughs> that's funny. Um, See, that's the type of stuff. I mean, we always talk about buying in bulk because buying in bulk is it spreads your your cost along along a lot of things. Like I said, I bought three thousand record needles for. Fifteen hundred dollars. Now that's a big chunk, um, and you, you think about it, it's like okay, that's a lot of money to lay out. But if it's really fifty cents a piece, if I can get ten dollars a piece out of them, that's you know that's what thousand times. I can can't do the math on it. It's a uh, yeah, thousand percent markup, two thousand percent markup on it. I mean. You can't go wrong with stuff like that, and and small dollar stuff. It's like we always talk about having our keeping your average ticket around twenty twenty five dollars, but that's that's really good. But you know, you can't sell fifty dollar items all day long for the most part. Most people can't afford that type of stuff. But if you can find those ten dollar items to to balance that out, you know, I may be selling record needles for the next two years, but if it's one or two a week, even or even three or four a week, you know, thirty forty dollars a week in needles that take up this i mean no space at all really and it's really easy to ship you know it may take me 10 years to sell them but you know i'll get my money back and i'll probably end up making i don't know ten thousand dollars off that 1500 you can't go wrong with stuff like that and he disappears sorry i'm coming you just reminded me of something i went into the back room this was a good buy Jason's very lucky in the fact that he has a very nice shop set up where he has everything. Oh, yeah. I forgot about those. Yeah, I can't find. I have an open one. I don't want to open this, but another time. But these are essentially brand new old stock Eagle oil cans. And on the back, they say um, Howitzer M2. So they're for they're military oil cans. One and, third pint. And you bought 300 of them? I bought 165. Okay. But you yeah. only paid like two bucks a piece, right? I believe they were, yeah, I think they were two. Yeah, they're two pop. Yeah, because when I got, I got, I show up at the, sh at the, at this auction and Jason's sitting there on his hands and knees. You know, I can only really see about half of him because he's in this giant crate digging these things out. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. I'm, <laughs> I'm on the floor pulling all these out of the crate. And uh, I was like, I'm buying them all. <laughs> and the guy's like, uh, I, I don't really want. He's like, I'm, I, I want them all. He's like, Well, I'll have to give you a price. And he kept like five or something like that because I had a couple guys that were coming interested in them. But yeah, what, well, what happened was is he actually charged me two a piece, but and I took 164, and then he rounded it off to just an even 300. Yeah. So it was all good. It's really crazy because we love this vendor. And every year we forget to get his name and, and his contact information because we could probably make a living off of him. Yeah. So um, I've sold already, I think, four or five of those. And yeah. I, only, I only put them up like a month ago. I How think. much are you getting for them? 20 bucks a pop. I mean, if I wanted to, I could put them at 10 and probably sell out in two seconds. But I'm like, you know, I'm never in a rush to sell stuff. I'd rather... Yeah, so I mean, you, know, you sell, you sell, uh, you got 165, you sell... 15 of them you got your money back now you got you got you got to make you get another three thousand dollars out of them by the time you're done yeah yeah but again that's 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 why it's nice to have a balance in your store of 
quantity items as opposed to single one-off items. Quantity items are great because you list it once and you forget about it. All right. Well, not Jason's method, but it's this video has been quite a while. Do you want us to cut it short, or should we yeah, continue? We got a few more minutes. What's what, what's on your what's on your desk? I can't even, you didn't talk, talk about the stuff there. Oh, okay. So finish up with that, and then we'll. Actually, no. I mean, there's a lot more to show. We'll keep going. Oh, okay, keep going then. I, I don't know what you have piled up back there. I need um, a 30 second break. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> is there any questions so far? I mean, you know, we, this is what kind of what we do. I mean, this is this is our life. I mean, this is why you don't see us going out and doing a uh, craziness with with YouTube and going out and doing a lot of a lot of weird videos or anything like that. I did a I did a uh, a flea market video, but you know you. How many times can you do a flea market video? Um, I think it's more fun to show stuff, you know, things we find and we talk about where we find this stuff at. I mean, Jason and I both love auctions. Um, he likes to do a lot of his sourcing from Craigslist and Marketplace. Um, I do 99% of my sourcing comes from auctions. Um, but then I also, I do have the occasional deal where I go and I, I make a buy at somebody's, you know, shop or, you know, it's a estate sale type thing. Um, flea markets, I've been trying to get back into those, but I'm still not seeing a whole lot. Um, when it comes to auctions, there's a couple different methods. Uh, primarily, we, we go through auction zip, and that's really good for where I'm at and where Jason's at. It doesn't necessarily, it all depends on where you're located at. So just go to auctionzip.com and go ahead and put in your uh, your zip code and then kind of do an, get an idea of how many you have there. Uh, and to give you an idea, I mean, for me, if I put in a, an auction zip for a typical weekend within 50 miles, I usually have 30 auctions on a Saturday and maybe 20 on a Sunday for a weekend. Jason is in a little bit more auction heavy area. So he, he'd probably have, he put 50 miles in, he'd probably have 40 or 50 on a Saturday. Um, the nice thing about auction zip is that they put a lot of pictures up. So you get an idea of the flavor of the auction. They're not going to picture everything. They're going to picture the things that they think are going to bring people in. I'm not interested in what they're taking pictures of. I'm more interested in what what I get a feeling from that auction. Is a lot of older stuff. Is it is it is a lot of dusty stuff? Can you tell if it's if it's been around a while and if it's something that's you think is going to sell? Like if the guy's got a lot of uh, you know, but Jason, we look at a lot of shop tools and things like that. Um, we look, I look at you know gun stuff. We look at what what else are they selling? And then okay, he's got that stuff. But what about all the stuff that's kind of goes along with that? So is it a car guy? Does he have a lot of car stuff? And then you got to okay, if you've got a lot of car stuff, you might have great tools, or you might have you know great ephemera things like that. You can always tell that by the pictures. You're not necessarily going to take the pictures of that, but that's going to draw you to the auction. And so you have to kind of pick and choose where you're going to go. And you can go, and if you don't like the auction, you can always leave. I did that a couple of weeks ago. I went to an auction house and they had great stuff, but the way they were selling it was terrible. They were literally piecing the entire auction out and they had thousands of items. And I'm not going to sit there and watch them piece apart a thousand. They had like, pocket knives is what they were on, moved on to next. And they literally had between a thousand and 2000 uh, pocket knives and they were literally selling them by the piece. And I'm like, there's great stuff in this auction. I don't want to spend 10 hours here. So, I left, you know, it kills me to leave something like that. But I also got to think I, I'll fall asleep in an auction like that. I mean, you know, but sometimes you, you just pick like that. And then, you know, estate sales or where Jason's at estate sales are fantastic for me. Not so great. Um, some places are better with that. And again, some places are great on the garage sale market. I, I'm not really good. I bought that for Jason. <laughs> Look at this thing. What I, I think it's like it's three feet long. Long. That is a ratchet. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a humongous ratchet. I mean, if you can't break it loose with that one, you're not getting it loose. <laughs> like an inch inch ratchet. So I mean, that thing's actually worth sixty or seventy bucks. But um, it's not that my time is more valuable. It's just like when 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 you're piecing things out and you have that much stuff, the people they're selling it to the collectors at that point. That means that they're going to cherry pick it out. And by the time they decide, okay, we we we've, we've sucked this box down. Now we're going to sell it as a lot. There's no value left. It's a lot. And so you sit back and say, okay, I can sit there and wait around until people get tired. They run out of money. Um, but, it, you know, collectors don't run out of money for the most part. They know how much to spend. Here's Johnny. Here's his fire axe. What'd you, what'd you pay? Where'd you get that? I don't even remember. This was an estate sale a year plus ago. 
I just put it up on eBay recently. <laughs> Original equipment fire axes are, are, are. This one's really clean too. 75 bucks, 100 bucks, something like that. I put it up at 100. No takers yet, but it's got a bunch of watchers. Shipping's going to be fun. Yeah. I'll figure it out. But I mean, that's kind of, I mean, Jason and I have pretty much the same model when it comes to how we, how we source. Um, it's just, we look for different things. All right. Let's get back to the nitty gritty and save the banter for later. <laughs> uh, Hawk says, Jason, how much do you have for Amstrads? And could you do a video on them? How much do you have? You have an Amstrad, don't you? I have two Amstrads. I have, no, three, I have four, I think. I have... A 1600, a 1640, those are you, this, those are the US versions. And then I have, those are like the more uh, like IBM compatible types. Yeah. And then I think in the back room here, let me grab one. Jason, Jason's shop is, is kind of long and skinny. The front shop is. He has two back rooms that he has other stuff in that are more squared. He has a, a, a huge bathroom um, that he actually has merchandise stored in. And he, he actually annexed another part of another shop that's a long, skinny shop with a garage door at the end. And that thing's probably 30 feet by 15 feet. And then he's in the process of acquiring the other half of that shop that he annexed. So he actually has an outdoor outlet from the back as well. And that's going to be another 15 feet long. Here we have... Oh, which one is that? Oh, this one. Oh, I'm sorry. I was reading the question. This is a 128K color personal computer. Color spelled like the UK version. Uh, pretty neat. It's got a little built-in three and a half. Cute little guy. And why were you asking, Hawk? Do you collect these or just curious? Then I got in the box. We have this guy. That's kind of cool. Yeah. What one is this? The CPC six uh, four six four rather. Sixty four older version then. I also I believe I have the power supplies for these too. Somewhere. I have a whole box of power supplies for. Did we get these at the computer what? show auction? What? Did we buy these at the computer auction? Um, these two, yes. The other two, I was talking about, no. We bought so much at the computer auction that we could not keep track of it all. And that was last last uh, May. Um, there's a couple of YouTube vi uh, videos of it. It's called the Mother of All Auctions. Uh, Mother of All Vintage Computer Auctions, if you look at those up. Um, you can find some posts about it and everything. We've talked about it in past videos. It was a huge vintage computer and gaming auction. And Jason ended up with about 25% of the whole auction. Hawk said it was his first word processor. He got, I got at the PX in Germany. Loved it. Got him a job. Just wishes he still had it. They're out there. You can find them. It's just a matter of working condition and what you're going to pay for them. Well, the, uh, problem, the, the problem with the Amstrads is they're really a UK uh, brand, so they didn't uh, have that many US versions. If I remember right, all those power supplies on those are 220. Um, the ones I have. At home, uh, the IBM compatibles, those are the U.S. versions. Mm -hmm. So they have regular power supplies. I right. collect computers. I think I have about maybe 40 or so vintage computers, I think, by now, <laughs> at least. Yes, and he needs to let go of some of them. No, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I have a lot of really interesting machines in my collection, actually. But that's that's for another video or something. I don't know. Yeah, one of these days you'll make a video about all that. Yeah. This is neat. This is a little um, calendar, 1933, for the um, Burdick um, Milk Company. Okay. So yeah. In New York. York. Yeah, people who collect like milk bottles and stuff love these type of things. Uh, and again, 1930s, just 30s advertising. I have three of them. I actually had four. 
uh, I put one up on eBay, and the guy who bought it was one of the family members of the company. It was pretty neat. He was real excited to get it. Oh we got a couple of Dungeons and Dragons boxes. That this one's the box is pretty shot, but I think it has more manuals than it's supposed to. I didn't get a chance to go through this yet. And this is the Ruins Under Mountain set by Forgotten Realms. I had this one when I was a kid, actually. <laughs> it's a good set. Is that just manuals in there? Is that all that's in there? And the maps, yeah. It's usually, it's usually a, a, a module, a manual, and maps. Okay. I, I never played Bunch of Dragons, so... And sometimes dice and... Uh, okay. and let me get a, a Radio Shack catalog. I love old catalogs. 1985. This is I great. still have them all the time. I, I, there's nothing. I mean, that one's clean, too. That's really cool. Yeah. I sell old catalogs. Um, you know, pretty much anything, you know, 80s and back. You, you'll get money out of even old clothing catalogs. I know Dusty sells like old Land's End catalogs from the 80s. Um, it's kind of crazy. Paper is one of the things I like to specialize in because it's, it's small, easy to ship. And you have collectors out there. It doesn't bring you a whole lot of money, but you know, you look at like ten dollars an item. But it it's nothing to ship it in the stay flat. It's just like shipping a CD. I mean, they're just super easy to deal with. And the nice thing is that storage factors. You know, if you're if you're dealing with a, a small storage issue or you just don't have enough room to put all your inventory, it's a tote of papers is a whole lot easier to store than than a, a tote of clothing. You get a whole lot more listings out of it. And here's more paper. <laughs> What is that? The Mighty Mo? The Mighty Mo. <laughs> this is the it's the, got the flop the five and a half floppy disk in here too. It's missing the actual Mo. <laughs> okay. Uh, who is Mighty, Mighty Mo? <laughs> I forget what this is. I think is it a game expansion thing? I forgot to be honest with you. I don't have one of these. Is it? It's for the Commodore 64. Okay, that explains it. Turned you into a communications giant. <laughs> that's pre internet giant, I assume. Yep, it lets you go online. Neat. Local banking networks. <laughs> ah, yeah. It's like a modem connection then. Yeah. Maybe that would be Mighty Mo as in Mighty Modem. Yeah, that would make sense. Now, if they made the modem that looked like Mighty Mode, that would be cool to have. It's cute because they have all these little cartoony things and instructions to make it like easy for people to understand when it's usually not easy in this era. <laughs> all right, Jason, go on to the next item. Come on. Sorry, sorry. I get stuck on this stuff. Got to snap him out of it. Yeah. You can't get me started. Oh, yeah. Now you there because, I mean, nobody's using those old modems, but. It's still the advertising part of it is actually cool. If someone's got the original modem, then they're going to want the paper, paperwork and everything. Yeah. Then we Elvira. got Elvira. This is cute. Is it I, a I, was at, I was at a thrift store with Dusty, and he got this for me. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Uh... Oh yeah, stereo manuals, CD manuals, VCR manuals. I sell. I've I've got. I actually bought them from Jason. Um, service manuals with wiring diagrams for I must have four or five hundred of them, and I've been I sell those all day long for fifteen dollars a piece, and yeah, it's just they're super easy to list. Take a few photos of it, put it up, and when someone needs to do something on one of those, that's all you. They're gonna buy it from you. Yep, this one actually, this is a CDI Philips, so this is actually a, a, one of those early CD um, video games that were yep. like super expensive at the time. Uh, then we got, this looks like a, yeah, an arcade flyer for the game Satan's Hollow and some stickers. So that's kind of neat. Sell the stickers separately. Well, no, I want to pair them. No, you want to sell them separately. <laughs> And this is kind of interesting. This is the 
Whovian time. <laughs> Doctor Who stuff. Yeah, I'm not a Doctor Who person, so I don't really know much about this, but it looks interesting. There's a couple of different ones. And one duplicate. But Doctor Who stuff's always good. Yeah, I guess. Kind of forgot I had this. Actually, I kind of forgot I had most of this. I think this has been sitting here for a couple of years. Yeah, because it had it. Because if I'd known you had it, you wouldn't have it by now. Uh, Doctor Who passport. Okay. Uh, what's this? That's April. Okay, it's just for a calendar process there. What is it? I do not know. Hmm. There's a whole bunch of them. Maybe it's a whole calendar. Yeah, it's a whole calendar. Loosely. Okay. Enough of that. That's probably a no sell. <laughs> uh, you'd be surprised. This was interesting. Kathy Dennis collection. Um, they actually yeah, it says your photos for selling catalogs or comic books. Uh, photos, for the most part, for those type of items. If it's a single sheet, like postcards or my stock certificates, I use a scanner for that stuff. This kind of says it's the official oh. Kathy Dennis fan club up here. And here's uh, like those a photos. Is that, is that her in the calendars too? Yeah. Oh, that. Yeah, actually, yeah, it is. So it's part of that whole set. So. Fan club. Um, oh, should I hide the number? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to assume Kathy Dennis is a companion for Doctor Who. Oh, maybe. Yeah, this could be part of the Doctor Who. There's a signed thing of her and another signed thing. Anyone know Kathy Dennis is in the audience? Uh, British singer-songwriter. Oh, okay. More fan club stuff. Yep. Someone will want this, I'm sure. Yeah. Um. Okay. Sure. I don't know who can. I mean, yeah. No. Says hope. Says hope you hope you like it. <laughs> well, it's still kind of cool. I mean, you sell it as a set. I mean, you put it all together. I mean, yeah. Here's a mystery science theater two thousand. Three thousand. Uh, three thousand. Sorry. It's like That's a folder. A, oh, just a folder. Okay. And then there's Sopranos tomato sauce. I guess. Nice. It's, it's signed by both of them. Looks like. See, that's good. I mean, some of these guys are, are not around anymore, and then that's, I mean, obviously it shows off, so. Yeah. Well, I have more sign stuff. That was um, Golderock? Golderock or something? That's it's from right. Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine, yeah. Galderac? Oh, yeah, and look, there's, um, what's his name? Uh, I, uh, search it. You're searching yeah. something on there. Oh, Marie the, Curtis, that's it. Yeah, that's it. In fact, the bottom one's signed. That's cool. Counselor Troy. Yeah, Counselor Troy. One of those two. How do you have all this ephemera that I just didn't know about? Dude, I forgot. I found this deep in the dark shelf in the back. Man, I'm serious. She, um, yes, she's very pretty, Mr. Sadie. <laughs> Um, actually, I just finished watching Next Generations again. I'm on the last episode, which I'll finish up tonight. In fact, this this could actually be one of the Cardassians from um, Next Gen. Next Gen, because they they were towards the end. There were some episodes with them, but I think they carried over to the to the Deep Space Nine. Here we have something that looks to be signed. Anna Green Gables. Carrie something or other. Or Kevin Sullivan, probably. Okay. Mm, I don't know what this is. Movie? Script, I guess? Yeah, it's a... Wait. Produced Another Mystery Science Theater 3000. 
Oh, and here's that picture again. And some classified fan. Yeah, you probably should put all that together. Yeah. Sealed envelope. What do we got here? Oh. Wow, an original 1300 Volkswagen manual. What's left of it? It's pretty shot. But actually, the inside contents is all right. It's the last outer page. Maybe yeah. the next inner one. I don't know. I think it's worth anything in this condition. It's not going to bring you great money, but it's still it's an original, so it's still bring you a little bit of money. Maybe twenty bucks. Thirteen hundred would be somewhere in the mid sixties. Uh, probably like sixty three on up. Oh, okay. The fifteen hundred was like sixty eight, and then they went to the sixteen hundreds. Ultra cycles. Never heard of them. Owner's manual. I mean, I love car manuals and, and stuff like that. I mean, it's such good money. And again, there's every, it doesn't matter what the most terrible car out there, there's somebody who's a collector of that car. <laughs> That's true. I mean, it's just, it's kind of sad when you think about it. But so, I mean, there's people out there that collect the Yugo, for goodness sake. So, hmm. or ultra cycle stuff. Oh, these are just miscellaneous um, hand sketched. Probably Davidson pictures. That yeah, might be good artist pictures. It might be part of that ultra cycle crowd, though. It says Greg Jones, 76. Hmm. I don't know. Greg Jones again. Greg Jones. That's not how you spell sketch. Greg Jones, 86. He was how you spell sketch. He's a man. Uh, there's a Greg Jones that's the managing editor of Motorcycle and Power Sport News. Hmm. We have Beauty and the Beast. This looks like Disney. Um, I think it was Prince. Uh, or are they? Oh, those are the cells. Is it a cell or is it just the? Uh, it's not a cell. It's there's a bunch of these. They're um, lithographs. Lithographs. Thank you. That's what I was thinking of. I think that's what they are. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of Beauty and the Beast ones here. There's about. Kind of missed the window on those. You probably should have sold them last year. Well, I'll catch the next window by the time I get to it. <laughs> System of a Down. This is signed. That's cool. Looking like a little chop suey to get your day going on. This is signed too, but I don't know. Oh, it says Doctor Who card on the back. So this is someone from Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, here's a ticket. Okay. <laughs> uh, whatever. Love we'll to see. Um, Star Wars: Return of Jedi official collector's edition. What? Now you know you got to get that up because Peter Mayhew just passed away. Oh, that's true, yeah. <laughs> Baseball, Mets. And this is the uh, 86, 25th anniversary. Ah, Mets, yeah. Now, that stuff is good. I mean, sports programs, they don't sell as fast um, as some things because, I mean, they, they just make so many of them. Um, this is part of that anniversary thing. Yeah, you just kind of have to – you look for a guy who wants to outfit his, his uh, room down and that type of stuff. So, A Christmas carol. It's like a here's the tickets. <laughs> Obviously, your wife gave you some of this stuff. No, not this. Mm -mm. 
Yeah. So somebody was a Broadway fan. I'm sure this is where all this stuff comes from. Yeah. Oh, there's more tickets in here. John Jones said he sold that Return of the Jedi magazine a few a uh, few months ago for low twenties. Oh, okay, cool. Another ticket. Fiona Apple. Wow. Okay, that's she hadn't been on to her in a while. I don't think so. Uh, Kira. Okay. That's cool. We have pen reels. There you go. That'd be good. Catalog. Yep. I love old catalogs because not only do they sell well, you know, they help you identify what the hell you own. Oh, this is junk. Uh, old Hippodrome magazine. Now, I've seen these for sale before. Um, it was like 1920s, right? It's 10 cents. Doesn't say. Oh, 1907. 1907. Okay, even older. $10 on it. Uh, in, in this bag, like someone was asking 10. Right. Next. I like this stuff. I get to sit down and show it. <laughs> All right. We got different stuff. Yeah, I like that. I like this type of stuff because, again, you've got a pile right there that's probably 25 listings. And it's literally, it, it fits in the palms of your hand. I mean, that's what's so cool about stuff like that. I mean, I'm telling you guys, paper is is always worth picking up and selling. Um, All right, this was a literally an auction box lot, box lot that I never looked at. Just threw it. <laughs> when I ship paper catalogs and stuff like that, I use Stay Flat mailers. These are, are designed not to really bend, so you can sit, ship photos in them. It's a little, ones I, I used to, I bought some before they had the, these I have to tape, so I don't really care for these that much, but these were cheaper. But this, a Stay Flat mailer, they cost about 30 to 40 cents a piece, but there's no other protection you have to get. You're not sitting there making cardboard, folding it over and slipping it into a poly bag and all that. You just slide it in here. I got a package here ready to go. This has a stock certificate in it. And it's super, super easy to deal with this type of stuff. And when you sell a lot of paper, you invest it in this type of shipping materials. It doesn't take up a lot of space. You get 50 in a box and it's so simple to do your shipping in the morning. When I, I ship out four or five things like in safe up mailers every day. And it's just, it's so easy to use. So, I mean, make sure you, you if you're going to invest in paper, make sure you invest in the way to ship it correctly as well. Um, so like when I, I ship, yep, that's the safe lets I used to use. So his is a little, he's got, you just pull the thing off. You don't even have to tape them though. So yeah. when, I, when I run out of these, I'll, I'll reorder ones with that again. I ordered these just as a trial. But I've got them in all sizes. I got them in CD size all the way up to the size that will hold my movie posters. Um, so they're like a 12 by 15 even. Uh, the pen year catalog, uh, or the, the year of the pen, whatever, it's, uh, it says uh, 1177 on it. So Wow, that's, even, that's newer than I thought it would be. Yeah. Uh, box lot at an auction. That's, that's the way to build your inventory cheap. Yep. Uh, damn it, I just, hold on one second. The closed yeah. chat popped up. Okay. If you've never been to an auction, Good. I would recommend go and don't plan on buying anything. Just watch the process. Box lots are when they they really either have too much stuff or they've got a lot of stuff that's maybe not be worth selling individually. Um, so what they do is they, they just throw it in a box and then people bid on the boxes. Usually box lots are either first thing they sell or last thing they sell. So strategy at auction is be the first to arrive, be the last to leave. You will get the best deals. Amen. Um, so it's, it can be a long, a standard auction is usually three to four hours. So you plan on being there for five to six hours. Um, but you'll, you'll be amazed at what it is. I actually had what my one auctioneer was asking me sitting there. It was a 600 lot auction. And we're like at auction, like lot like five fifty. He has one of his other auctioneers going. He's like, "What are you still doing here?" I'm like, "Bottom feeding," because I'm buying stuff for a dollar. I'm selling for forty bucks. It's just it's that easy to make money at auction. Where do you buy your mailers, Eric? I get mine uh, either I get them off of Amazon or I get them on eBay. Um, Amazon is primarily where I buy them, just because I don't want to pay shipping because they're so freaking heavy. You know that box of fifty mailers probably weighs ten pounds. Um, so you gotta be careful when you buy them. A lot of times you can find them free shipping on eBay even, but, um, I try to, I try to pick them all up 
in in that in that thing because again I'm I'm writing that off as a business cost anyway. I don't really care what they cost, um, but I like they ship them to my door. You can't find them locally. That's the problem. I get the Uline myself, but that's not the cheapest place. Not the cheap. I mean, you have a Uline account. That's why you do it that way, though. Yeah. If you order set because you order specialized boxes and heavy duty boxes and stuff, you can't just pick up normally. Yeah, I also get to use my Net Thirty account, so I don't have to pay for it right away too. Yep. Um. So this is a box lot that I bought for five bucks just for the hell of it because it looked interesting. I have no idea what this is, and I really haven't looked at it. And this is about a year old, I think. I just kind of forgot about it. There's a set of headphones here. Who made them? It says KOSS. Oh, KOSS, yeah. Those are good. Those are probably 20, 25 bucks. Then there's this thing. That's a camera flash. It's a Strobinar by Honeywell. There's two of those. Yep. Those are not worth a whole lot. You sell them as a lot. Then uh, accessories for a zigzag sewing machine. Let's see what's in it. Um, little sewing stuff. And again, not worth a whole lot. Yeah, it's Goodwill. Um, Goodwill, the round file. No idea what that is. That's a, a timer for a uh, photography. It's a, t a photo timer, so you can for development. Oh, okay. Yeah, Mr. Say, we did the gun tools and the Civil War tools at the very beginning. That was the very first thing we did. Yeah, go back and watch it. You'll definitely like it. <laughs> that wait, that was the first thing we did after like thirty minutes of banter. Of course. <laughs> yeah, um, we. We basically staged an intervention at Jason's uh, shop last week, and we're kind of forcing him to, to list a lot of things he'd, he'd been kind of uh, putting off. My intervention invention is coming up, so. TR Sadie Microcomputer News. All stacked <laughs> All right. Let's go. So we've gone from Civil War tools to now we're talking about ephemera. We're out of ephemera. I'm on, I only have a couple more items. Well, okay. yeah, yeah, just a couple more. This I haven't even opened since I bought it at the auction hall way back. This, I mean, this wasn't that long ago, three months. Underwood typewriter? No. This is a... Underwood vending machine. This is a laptop. Yeah. The big boy laptop. Who made it? General data. Oh, okay. That's the general data one. Okay. And this one does work, supposedly. Yeah. yeah, it needs to be cleaned up. But looks like it's all there. It's even got a little floppy drive on the side. It's probably about 1987. There's a whole bunch of stuff up here. Oh, this was the one where I like the power supply. I forgot. Rick. Power supply is a little handle. Isn't that neat? And it's got the user's manuals and it's separate keyboard or a, a number pad, I guess. Yeah. That you could attach this. <laughs> the good old days. That's cool. Forgot all about this one. That was part of a was that that was part of a lot, wasn't it? Or was that separate? This was separate, I believe. Yep. I, that was a weird auction. That was uh, out of up, upstate New York. And we found it by accident, and it turned out being a great auction. We actually are on their auction mailing list, but, I mean, they just do huge lots of stuff nowadays. But it's about a six-hour turnaround on the uh, driving up three hours there and three hours back for Jason. Don't be afraid to drive. I mean, that's, you know, we... We kid Dusty all the time because Dusty, Dusty isn't a, doesn't like to drive for more than 20 minutes in one direction. Um, Jason and I are like, what, eight hours? All right, no problem. Um, I'm to drive to, to go out there and, and, and find the best deals if you're not if you're not having being successful around your area. That's one of the computers we picked up recently. Um, paid $50 for it's worth, of, you know, said between $250 and 3 
little cleanup on it. Yeah, I brought this one out. I bought three of these, but I was showing this one in particular because it has this nice, fresh, deep scratch right here, which wasn't there when I bought it, but somehow between Eric picking it up and getting it here, it got that deep scratch. Mm, right yeah. <laughs> Very clean on the inside, though. Yeah, just a little dust by the processor fan. Nice little machine. This is a uh, silent anyway. chip, if I remember right. It's got the little speakers up front. Volume adjust and everything. It's a cool machine. Too bad it's, it's like beat up. Mm. <laughs> At least my monitor didn't get scratched. Yeah, that could have happened just sitting on the floor, people walking by kicking it. Oh, sure. I had to shove everything into that truck. You would not believe how tight it was. <laughs> kicking it, they had like a spike sticking out of there, too. So these have been here a while. <laughs> Breaking. <laughs> I have a total of like a thousand records that I haven't gotten to. This, these have been here for like ever. And these aren't the best. He's got a thousand records and most of them are hip hop. Are these? They're right. Uh, yeah, that's Pitbull before he was famous even. I don't know. It's Pitbull featuring Little John. What year is that from? These are all, if you notice the cover, these are all uh, like promos that DJs would use. Two thousand four. Yeah, I didn't hear about Pitbull until three or four years ago. I mean, now, granted, I'm not connected to the uh, hip hop world, obviously. So <laughs> that's funny. But at least it's somebody I've heard of. So then we got a bunch. Uh, I got this, I think, two years ago. A bunch of laser discs. This is a, um, a, a sampler. sampler. Yeah, that they keep I running the player. Believe it or not, the most the laser disc I've been selling lately because I pick them up every now and then. I actually bought a case of of uh, laser disc test patterns for color, and I sell those like crazy. Hmm. Command. Yes. Get to the chopper. Sally. <laughs> was that when we said you dropped him? That was funny. Yeah. I lied. <laughs> that was great. Did I kill you last? I lied. Independence Day. Terminator. Oh, wait. Maybe no one's ever known what a laser disc looks like. And yeah, not all the millennials. They're like a big CD. <laughs> Cliffhanger. Dude, all right. Those are some short shorts, just saying. Yeah, everybody climbs mountains in short shorts, you know. You climb mountains, you climb the pole, it's kind of the same thing. Star Wars. See, the bad thing is, is that's a special edition version. If it had been an original edition version, it would go for a whole lot more. Hmm. That means that that's the version that George Lucas messed with. This is all three, apparently. Yeah. I mean, it's still sell for decent money, so... Oh, yeah. The original version Star Wars stuff where, where they don't have the added-in special uh, effects worth so much more money. Hmm. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I think we're done. Hey, Land Shark Picker finally showed up. About time. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> uh, he, was, he was here earlier. But yeah, that's, I mean, we just kind of wanted to show everybody. I mean, I said we haven't had a chance to, to do a video lately. Just kind of show everybody what we picked up. I had to dig out his computer so he can actually turn around and get it off his chair. Yeah. I'm trying to clear up some space so I can sit down over here. Now the key is, is how long is it going to take you to get it all listed? 
Well, considering a lot of it's been sitting here for two years, it might be a bit. <laughs> there he is. Oh, kind of. Hold on, I gotta adjust this better. Fix right. that. Tilt the monitor. There you go. All right. Kind of close enough, I guess. Yeah, you kind of get glimpses into the back rooms there, so. But yeah, I mean, having a you know having a separate shop is really nice, but it can be pricey. Mm. Yep. Not as cool as the stuff that Mother's Mustache buys on the uh, online auction show that she she hits. <laughs> we see you out there. <laughs> We're watching you. <laughs> oh wait, I'm fixed on me here. Say something something there you go it's working so what was the coolest item this month i don't know like the past like year is just a blur awesome this month hmm. i think i think for me this month the coolest item was that uh that uh train uh that bethlehem steel um lunchbox i got Jeez, I don't even know. Like, I have to go back and look at like my records. I don't remember like what sales were within the past month. Yeah, I need to do a what I sold video. I have just... to go back to the YouTube videos to figure out what it was that I bought. Yeah, that'll probably be my next video is what I sold in April because I haven't I didn't do one for uh, the beginning of April. I'll just do one that puts everything together just to give you an idea of what I sell. Um, that's the, the easiest way to figure out kind of what what we buy and what we sell is look at our what I sold videos. Jason, they take about three minutes to go through. Mine take a little bit longer. Um, it's not my fault. I'm direct and to the point. You're yeah. sitting there giving like a whole story and synopsis. I on. like flavor with my videos. And, you know, Jason's are like, this is what I sold. This is what I sold. This is what I sold. <laughs> I got one done in four minutes and something seconds. <laughs> it was like 50 items in four minutes. It was like your brain's you're trying to just process awesome. everything. You're like, you're putting YouTube on half speed to get through it. <laughs> thanks craig <laughs> <laughs> no it's not so much that it's just i buy a lot of stuff i just you know and then you got to remember what's in the first month well technically i probably haven't sold any of that yet so i don't know what its value is i mean it is i mean it is true i mean when you sit back and you think about if you buy in bulk like we try to do and we, we always recommend try to buy in bulk as much as you can um it's it gets complicated i mean especially when you're you know today both of us are completely full we have we don't really want to spend any more money to buy anything but that doesn't stop us from getting on and shitting our usual sites and saying what's out there because sometimes the deal is just too good to pass up yeah ain't that the truth you know you just gotta you know gotta make sure you got the money to do it and sometimes you gotta yeah you, you rob peter to pay paul because you know that that's a deal it might be worth three or four or five thousand dollars down the road for you i mean, I mean, yep. I mean I, I, the hardest part is convincing yourself that there, there's always going to be good deals out there i i might think that's my biggest thing is always missing the best deals yeah i mean you know it's i still can't remember what i've bought in the last month i mean i you know a lot of the stuff i buy is good so it's hard to narrow it down i mean you know i I think we took the average selling price and it was about, what was it between 40, 45 and 50? Yeah, 46, 47 dollars, something like that. Mine's like at, at 24 dollars right now. Um, but that's because I sell a lot of paper and, and paper brings your price down. Yeah, Todd, Todd, I mean, Todd, you buy storage units and you, you're out there at the garage sales filling up your truck. I mean, you know, we, we don't even, I haven't bought a storage unit in three years. I mean, God, I hate them. You know why? Because about, 80% of what I bought at storage units is still in my back room death pile. <laughs> but you got such good stuff. I mean, Jason doesn't really do clothing, but he's got some of the best clothing in, out of the storage unit. The guy was a footlocker guy, and he's got all kinds of jerseys and shorts, and it's all, all active wear, and it's all good stuff. They're all basketball shorts and Nike and Adidas shirts. There's literal they're, – there's Like six totes. There's either five or six totes, and they're fifty-gallon totes. Yeah, they're not the like, small ones; they're the huge. I can't even lift them. 
I told him next time I get up there, I said, I might just buy it all off of him just because it's good. It, some of it's my size. That's kind of what I'm looking at, <laughs> more of a of a sizing thing. Yeah. In fact, I have those. When you came over, you took pictures of those leather jackets I've had sitting here for years. Yeah, leather, brand new leather jackets. Price tags on them run from two hundred to nine hundred dollars, and they came out of a storage unit two years ago. They've been sitting. <laughs> that was the first unit you bought. Was it? It was. It was either first or the second. Yeah, it was early. Mister Say, do you want that breaking album? You can have it. Send me your message me on Facebook or something with your address. I'll send it to you. Mr. Sadie's like my number one fan. Yeah. Jason, yeah. you still got stuff from that unit? Yeah, yeah, that was a long time ago. That was forever ago. But, you know, I can't, I can't really complain because I can guarantee you I can find stuff that I've had for four years. Matter of fact, I've been doing online auctions out of my own garage with a local auction site here just to get rid of some of my my stuff that I it's too big for eBay or that I don't think it's worth enough to put on eBay just to clean out space. <laughs> You know, and I do those once a month and I sell usually between 125 and 150 items. And I make, you know, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars a month off that off that stuff, off my excess crap that I don't want to deal with. You yeah. know, that I literally have no money in. I you know, I know what you're saying about like hoarder, but I mean technically it's inventory. You know. It's, well, it's you know, it's inventory, but uh, I'm not talking about my computer much. collection, by the way. I meant like the stuff in the back. <laughs> the last unit I remember Jason buying was a bunch of shoes. Yeah, that's what we cleaned cleaned out of the storage unit was the excess from that storage unit. You, you know what I did? I sold. I, I got all the gold and sold that, and then just almost I, all the gold. I took all the shoes and I gave them to my neighbor who does like uh, yard sales because I I got tired of looking at. <laughs> Well, you got gold and you got some electronics out of there. I have that laptop in the back that I totally forgot about till just now. That was a couple hundred bucks. It's a good working laptop. So, I mean, yeah, there's, I mean, there's good money out there. Just, I mean, I mean, I just bought hookahs. Little personal hookahs. <laughs> nice. Really silly. They're five inches. They sell for about fourteen dollars a piece. I bought twenty of them for five dollars, eight dollars, something like that, at an online auction. And I could have bought a whole lot more. I just didn't know what they looked like because they—they literally were. It was like this: hookahs in a box. And it came out of a storage unit. The guy was uh, a ten-year. It had been stored for ten years, and so I, you know, what the heck? I'll buy them and, and see if they, you know, do anything with them. And oh, Craig, Craig, if you go back not too far from now, I had another portable computer that I showed. Yep, I've got I got a portable computer I picked up recently. I need to make a decision on, and yeah, that's true. Put your stuff in. I you know that's the problem is I my stuff's all worth good money. That was one of the reasons I I started doing online auctions was I had a ten by ten storage unit that I wanted to get cleaned out. You know, I'm paying a hundred dollars a month to store this stuff. So I actually I moved it all to my garage and sold it all to my garage instead of paying. I had that for, you know for a year. Or so, in addition to my my cost when I bought it, I had to throw another twelve hundred dollars on top of it. But I made I've had four four or five auctions so far out of all that stuff, and I've made close to five grand off of it. I don't know. All I could say is um, I'm finally out of the storage unit business. And I was in there for the sole purpose of making it my trash can. <laughs> it was literally just trash. <laughs> yeah, if I sold everything by the piece, I've got enough stuff to fill up about seven anchor stores with just slides and, and uh, paper goods and things like that. And, I mean, obviously record needles now. Otherwise, just get out there and get shopping. Yeah, Find I mean, cool stuff. there's always going to be plenty of stuff that you don't get to. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I mean, I go back there every like couple of months, and I make up a few boxes that I just send to Goodwill of stuff that I know that I really have no interest at any point in time of listing. You if know? you're close to Jason, you can get hooked up with some free stuff every now and then. So, oh god, I I met this 
this one guy who watches the shows, I think, so I won't say his name or anything, but I, I met him like a couple of weeks ago at this estate sale. He just started talking to me and I was talking to him and I was like, listen, you're close. Come over to my place. I got a whole bunch of free stuff for you. And he came by and I like loaded his truck up with free stuff. Well, I did that with my, all my clothing that I had. I thought I cleaned out all my clothing a few years ago, and I found underneath my stairs in my house, I have a little storage area, and I forgot I had clothing back there. It was nice boxes. It wasn't bad or anything. And I started going through it. I'm like, I'm trying to get all this stuff out, and I look down, and I've, I've got like six huge boxes of clothing, and I'm like, I don't want to do clothing anymore. Um, so I picked out a couple pieces that I knew were really valuable and bagged the rest up. I'm in a local uh, online uh uh it's uh run by jason t smith's mother it's an ohio thrift uh thrifting board type thing um and just put it on there does anybody want some inventory I, i'm out of the clothing business you know let me know if you want it and 10 minutes later somebody shows up and i give them like eight bags of clothing you know hopefully they, they did really well with them. there's a lot of ralph lauren and stuff like that and i just don't want to deal with it um because it takes up too much space. And it's not that I don't like clothing, but it just takes up way too much space. I still have like three totes of clothing listed. But if I got rid of all those clothing listings that have been up forever, I could that's three three spots on my shelves that I could really fill up easily with, with smalls like this stuff here. I don't mind donating. I don't. It, to me, it's a write-off. It's a loss anyway. I'm, I'm not if I already purchased it, but I bought a lot of clothes at estate sales where I would literally walk in on the last day and just give them fifty bucks and take every bit of clothing out of there. Um, easiest way to get massive amounts of clothing, or you know, the bins are right around the corner for me now. They opened a new one. I haven't been to it yet. Just don't. I don't have time, and I don't need that type of stuff. But yeah. Yeah, I, miss, I, I agree. I, I picked up some, uh, I don't mind jackets so much, but it was a real, I can't remember, it's a It's a special jacket, uh, jean jacket that they actually do designs on or something like that, and I cannot remember the name of it, but they sell for about a hundred and a half, and I had one of those in there, and a couple of things like that. I like uh, ADGG's comment there, space closest to the computer is prime. You would it, think that. <laughs> it doesn't really work out that way because what you cannot see is my entire inventory that goes this way. Yeah, my problem is I have several shelves in here, but like it doesn't fit at anything. <laughs> it seems like I never have enough space. Well, I've got these, I use these 27 gallon totes, and I've got I've got 14 of them full of inventory that's not listed yet. I just had to think about it for a second. I have 18 shelves that are like six by six, I guess, by 24. Yep. Well, you've got a lot of shelves that you set up for an inventory system you really haven't utilized. Yeah, it's a bit messy. I need to straighten things up. But, you know, a lot a lot of my stuff is small. It's like all those blue binders back there I've talked before. Those are full of slides. Uh, there's there's 10,000 slides there. There's 10,000 slides in the... Uh, Two boxes over here and there's probably 60 or 70 thousand slides in totes over here um and those take they just take time to list and then you know i'll get to them eventually yeah i bet you todd has some really heavy duty shelves for all that gold he stacks up that's true gold and silver yeah <laughs> yeah i got i just found four four gold rings recently so oh yeah yeah, I wonder where those came from. Salvage them from Jason's trash. <laughs> Eric digs into my trash and finds gold. Go figure. Oh, he was, you, you, you were throwing, you were, him and Adam were throwing away everything out of the storage unit. And I'm not that kind of guy. I'm the kind of guy who's like, oh, what's that? What's that? So they're they're trying to throw it all away. And I'm like, oh, look at me. See here. Let me look at this. And I found a box of jewelry. And I'm like, here, here's a box of jewelry. He's like, just take it. Like there might be gold in there. Take it. All right. I think I even sold the, sold the gold actually, and I was still like, take it. <laughs> and so when I got home, I I went opened it up, and there was four gold rings in there. So, no, I mean not a whole lot of gold, but still, I mean it's just it's still gold. It'll take me forever to list it. It just goes into a pile. So, dude, uh, MM, you don't understand that unit was the dirtiest, stankest. Well. No, Jason's unit became oh. the dirtiest, stankish unit because it wasn't that bad when he put it in there. No, it was. 
It really was. There was rat poop, like or mouse poop, like everywhere. Man, it was toxic. That's all I could say. And Jason decided to store it for another year. And I made Adam go in there and clean it all out, and he wasn't even wearing gloves. It was the first time he's done like a clean out of a locker, and he didn't have any gloves on. And I was like, well, it's too bad about that. <laughs> Start digging. <laughs> He's like, what's this little black stuff? <laughs> I'm like, nothing. Just keep moving it out of the bag. <laughs> Adam is primarily an Amazon guy, so he's uh, – we're trying to break him into the into the real world of eBay. But he does it for fun because he makes really good money doing Amazon. So, Yeah, MM, you don't realize how just much nasty that stuff – I was just – I just wanted to take it and throw it out. And Eric's like, no, no, let me look. So I was throwing these dirty bags out. I'm going through them. I don't care. Oh, man. Well, I'm glad you made out. Poor Adam did all the hard labor, and he didn't get any gold. Yeah, He was, no. he was on my boat. He's like, I'm not touching this junk. <laughs> <laughs> I'll dig for gold. I don't mind. Oh, yeah. Adam's awesome. He's a good friend. All right, man. I think we should cut it out. I've been on for about an hour and a half. So, Have we? I feel like it's been 10 hours. I, I need like, a nap. I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> you always need a nap. That's the problem. I'm trying to see how long, how long we've been on for. Who's Bio Adam? Is that him? No, right? No. Eric? No. No, no. It's well. I don't know. I don't know if he has. Maybe Adam has a has a, a secret life we don't know about. So yeah, I don't want to say his full name because you know I don't know if he uh, he doesn't really do YouTube videos or anything. So no. But he's like primarily an Amazon seller. No, 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 no. Not Adam Wacker. Not that's. I think that's Adam Wacker you're talking about there. Now this is a different guy. This is a guy we hang out with. Um, again, he's primarily an Amazon seller. He does do eBay on the side primarily to get rid of his his other stuff. So. Um, yeah, he's been on some late night hangouts in the past, but he doesn't really do a lot of YouTube and things like that. But he, he was mainly was helping us out for fun. Just as it's kind of a break of his day. So, and he's 29. So he's so young and naive. <laughs> I love torture him. I like to torture him because he's so young and he, you know, he has, sometimes he just doesn't know what he's got in his hands. You're like, that's what this is. He's like, what is that? No, it's not that. If I just reference like anything from the '80s, he has no clue what I'm talking about. It's, it kills me. Kind of fun. It is fun. <laughs> All right, guys. So make sure you again you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to Jason on our channels. Again, they're in the description of the video. That's where you'll see our, our channel links. Um, notifications for when we put out. Now we don't we don't bombard you with videos. That's one thing we're definitely not going to do. We're, we're maybe one a week if we do that many. Um, but we appreciate uh, all the uh, subscribers and. Uh, Hopefully you'll like the information. Yeah, and if anyone uh, just came in or came in recently, make sure you go back and watch this whole video. There's a lot of cool stuff in it. So, yeah. Right, Mr. Peace. Note, we're heading out. All right. Have a good day, everybody. All right. Later. Where's the button to stop it? <laughs> oh, there it is. Never mind. Bye, guys. <laughs>